iron mount, only one thing stands in the way. Up until 1969, a horse racing track stood alone, but spawned the idea for the ultimate horsepower facility. And out of that grew a monster. The Monster Mile at Dover, Delaware. Three of Winston Cup's top jockeys, Bill Elliott, Dale Earnhardt, and Rusty Wallace hope to tame that Monster Mile. Next, it's post time. We're about to unleash hundreds of horsepower as we get set for the Dover, Delaware 500. The weather is threatening here this afternoon. That's the reason why the command has already been given to start engines, and the race will be getting underway very shortly. The temperature is 72 degrees. We do have uh, overcast skies right now and a 90% humidity. However, the forecast is for clearing skies as we go throughout the afternoon. So the cars are lined up now on the uh, pit area, 40 strong, getting ready to move onto the racetrack in just a few moments. Let's go to Jerry Punch on pit road. Well, it's a Ford foursome up front on the pole of brand new track record, young Mark Martin here, followed by the Jack Roush Pro Line Ford. Four Fords in the first four starting spots. Alongside him is Alan Gowicki. Of course, Gowicki sat on the front row here a year ago. Starting third, the man who is trying to hang on to this point lead, that is Bill Elliott. Now, uh, Bill Elliott had a problem early in the week. He tore up the car he was scheduled to run here at Dover in Friday's first practice session. The car had a problem with the engine. He smacked the wall and had to bring the backup car out. This is actually the car he ran at Darlington and won there. And starting fourth, the car has won the past two years in a row. Brett Bodai in the Crisco Ford, and he needs to win in a big way. Let's go further up pit road to Nick Berger. Nick? Well, Rusty Wallace had been a solid contender for the Winston Cup points title until last week when an early and controversial wreck with Jeff Bonai put him out at the dawn of the race and butted him down to third place in points. Rusty needs a strong finish here this afternoon to retain any hope of the title. Bonai was severely criticized after the race by Wallace. Wallace said he had brain pain. Certainly for Wallace and for Jeff Bonai, this race this afternoon takes on added meaning. Both desperately want to win to overcome last week. Jerry Punch and Nick Bergeron on pit road. Larry Newber is at Pitt Central. Let's introduce to you right now the starting lineup for today's Delaware 500. On the pole with a new track record of 148.075 miles an hour in this Pro Light Ford number six, Mark Martin. Outside of row number one, it's the Xerox Antifreeze Ford, Alan Kowicki from Greenfield, Wisconsin. Row number two, Bill Elliott from Dawsonville, Georgia in the number nine Coors Ford. Outside of the second row is Brett Bodine in number 15, the Crisco Ford. Then Rusty Wallace starts fifth in the number 27, Kodiak Pontiac. And alongside Jeff Bodine in the number five, Levi Garrett Chevrolet. The fourth row, Daryl Waltrip in car number 17, the Tide Chevy, and Morgan Shepard in the number 88, Red Baron Frozen Pizza Oldsmobile. In row number five, it's Ken Schrader, car 25, the Folgers Coffee Chevy, and then Davey Allison, who won last week at Richmond in the number 28 Haviland Ford. The sixth row, Michael Waltrip, a winner in the Grand National race here yesterday, the number 30 Country Time Pontiac, and defending Winston Cup champion Dale Earnhardt in the number three GM Goodwin Chevrolet. The seventh row, Kyle Petty in the Wood Brothers number 21 Cisco Ford, and Lake Speed in driving the number 83 Wins Oldsmobile. The eighth row has Sterling Marlin in number 44, the Piedmont Airlines Oldsmobile, and the 55 Crown Skull Classic Oldsmobile, driven by Phil Parsons. Row number nine, Dale Jarrett in the number 29 Hardy's Oldsmobile, and Bobby Hillen Jr. in the Miller High Life Buick car number eight. Row number 10, the number 26, Quaker State Buick, driven by Ricky Rudd, and the number four Kodak Film Oldsmobile, driven by Rick Wilson. As you look at the rest of the field, Let's talk a little bit about the racetrack and how tough it is. In the booth with me, Ned Jarrett and Gary Nelson. It's a very tough track. Some have figured it out, and Ricky Rudd is one of them. He certainly is. He has won the last two races in September here at Dover Downs. He's a very smooth race driver. He knows how to take care of his equipment, and that is the key factor here at Dover. You've got to be smooth all day long, keep in the lead lap, and be competitive as long as you possibly can be. He won from 11th and 13th position, but he was driving a Ford. He's driving a Buick this year, starting in 19th position. And Gary Nelson, what about all these Fords up front? Is horsepower the reason they're up there? What does it take here? Well, Dover is a very interesting track. You know, the uh, popular opinion has always been that the Fords have, the, the motors produce more low-end torque, which gives them a little bit better pulling power. And it's almost uphill coming off these turns. So that's been kind of the, the, uh, the way everybody has thought about it. But I think uh, in more recent 
oftentimes the horsepower and the torque curve have evened out this season between the Chevys and the Fords, so it may be a little more aerodynamic today. All right, here comes the field through corners number three and four, and we should be getting a start to this 500-lap race on the one-mile Dover Downs International Speedway. The pace car is in. The front row, Mark Martin and Alan Kowicki, a couple of guys who have never won Winston Cup races. The green flag flies, and here we go. Through the first and second turns, Mark Martin on the inside and Alan Kowicki on the outside. Here comes Bill Elliott, though, from his second row starting position. And Bill Elliott is going to grab the lead as they head for turn number three with Mark Martin running in second position. Elliott is going to lead lap number one of 500. Brett Bodine has gone to third position. Alan Kowicki is back to fourth. And then the fifth spot is being held by Rusty Wallace as they're down the back stretch once again. Bill Elliott in the number nine, the current points leader in Winston Cup competition. Here's some battling going on in the pack. That's Dale Earnhardt along with Michael Waltrip. Also right there in the number 55 car is Bill Parsons. Lake Speed in 83. And there is Kyle Petty in car number 21 looking to the inside of Lake Speed. You know, with the uh, threatening skies here today, Dover has always been approached by the drivers as an endurance race. Just take it easy, wait around for the last 100 laps, and then race. But today, it's all going to change. The drivers have to be thinking about what if this race gets shortened by rain. We have to be in a position to win. So they're all trying real hard right now. They're going to look at it as a 250-mile race first and then see how things are at that point and go from there. Exactly. It's going to be very hard on the equipment to run that hard for that long. Usually everybody just takes it easy. Today, I think we're going to see a lot of racing from early on all the way through the middle of the race. The 28 car driven by Davey Allison, most recent winner in Winston Cup competition. The number 30 yellow car driven by Michael Waltrip, the most recent winner in NASCAR competition yesterday here at this track in Grand National competition. And then the number 55 car driven by Phil Parsons, all racing for position. Carson's making a move on Michael Walker, getting down on the inside. We see that most of the drivers are using the low groove here in the early going. As the race goes on, though, the groove will move up. And you can see how Bill Elliott and Mark Martin have sort of taken off and left the others in their wake. Bill Elliott in the number nine car leads, and Mark Martin, number six, is in second position. Then about a half a straightaway back already, the number seven car of Alan Kowicki is in Brett Bodine, Rusty Wallace, Jeff Bodine, Morgan Shepard, Darrell Waltrip, and Ken Schrader. Well, that really is a big jump that Mark Martin and Bill Elliott have taken all over Alan Kowicki there. That's uh, quite a distance for such a uh, few laps, six laps into the race, and it looks like they're pulling away pretty good. There are Rusty Wallace and Jeff Bodine, the guys that had the on-track altercation at Richmond last week in which uh, Rusty Wallace's car was very heavily damaged and he was unable to complete the race, losing second place in the point standings, falling to third. And there is Jeff Bodine who had uh, the encounter with him. Now we move up and watch Ricky Rudd in the number 26 car along with Dale Jarrett in 29 and number 12, that's Mike Alexander. And they're all, excuse me, Bob, are catching up to Dale Earnhardt. Dale is sort of backpedaling through the field at the moment. Now, whether he's changed his driving style here at Dover, he's had a tough time finishing 500 laps on this racetrack. And as we said at the top of the show, it's a track that you can't really attack for 500 miles. You've got to sort of take it easy. And uh, you wonder if, if he maybe is changing his driving style or maybe the car just won't go any faster at this point. You can see Dale Earnhardt just ahead of Ricky Rudd up there, just ahead of uh, Sterling Marlin also. You know, Dale Earnhardt is a, known as a hard-charging driver, one who charges really hard. But I don't think he's ever finished in the lead lap here at Dover. That's, his crew was telling me that this morning. And maybe that's what, kind of what you were saying, Ned, that the track really isn't suited for a hard-charging driver. Well, you can see the tire smoke coming off of Sterling Marlin's car number 44 as he came off of that turn. Fans all came to their feet. They thought something was going to happen. You can still see smoke from that. And you wonder if Sterling maybe has gotten next to somebody as Mike Alexander goes on the inside. Here's Ricky Rudd going by Dale Earnhardt. So Rudd moves to the inside in number 26 and Dale Earnhardt to the outside. That statistic that you guys were talking about is absolutely correct. Not only is Dale Earnhardt never won here at this racetrack, he has never finished on the lead lap. And he would certainly like to change that statistic here this weekend. Now, last year, you remember, he was indeed a leader of this race. It looked like that he was going to win, but the car went away, and Ricky Rudd drove the victory. Now, 
we see some action from inside Rick Wilson's car, the Kodak in-car camera. Right ahead of him is the Piedmont Airlines Holdsfield driven by Sterling Marlin. Dale Jarrett also up ahead, and so is uh, Dale Earnhardt. I'm not so sure that that smoke that was coming from uh, Marlin's car was tire smoke. We'll continue to watch that, though. Yeah, it, uh, it looked like that he might have had a tire rubbing. Now, many times, especially coming off of turn four, we will see tire smoke from the right rear tire but uh, that seemed to be a little bit more and a little bit early, but as we see him on the straightaway here, we don't see any of it. We'll see him watching as he goes into the turn and see if any of it uh, happens as Rick Wilson tries to make a move on him. We're watching outside the back glass of the uh, Hardy's Oldsmobile, and this action uh, continues to heat up as the number 30 car. Uh, Michael Waltrip is being passed by, or at least Daryl Waltrip, his brother, is attempting to pass him. That's Lake Speed. Uh, on the inside and uh, Kyle Petty on the inside looks like uh, Daryl may be falling back just a little here Yes, he is. I'm not sure his car is handling the way he wants to because now Daryl is a very smart race driver And it could be that he's uh, sort of taking it easy, but I don't believe he's taking it that easy He lost five spots the last lap and here he's losing two more. Now, there's a good example right here Ricky Rudd going forward Daryl Walter going backwards uh, You know he, you almost guess that your chassis set up because it constantly changes here at Dover and really at most racetracks nowadays. But it looks like Ricky Rudd, starting farther back in the field, has chosen a better race, starting race setup than Darrell. They're, they're on the cast each other, Ricky going to the front, Darrell kind of moving towards the back. Now the 21 car of Kyle Petty is in 13th, and uh, Ricky Rudd trying to pass him and pick up the spot. Now here is Ken Schrader in car number 25, and Davey Allison in number 28 as they trade position. And Michael Waltrip is also right there. Waltrip has to have a psychological edge, at least, going into this event because of the tremendous victory that he had yesterday, his first in Grand National competition. Yeah, that's good racing right there, uh, Ken Schrader and Davey Allison. Davey in the four, Ken Schrader in the Chevrolet on the outside. They're both, it looks like Ken Schrader, when he gets up on the outside of Davey, gets a little momentum. Davey was able to pull up alongside of him, but now he's having a hard time going on being past because of the momentum that Ken Schrader gets from running a little higher. The car that's on the outside is able to keep his RPMs up just a little bit more. He's, he's traveling a little farther distance, but not losing as many RPMs in the turns, and it usually gives him a better run off of each turn and down the straightaway. That green and white pole that you saw in the shot there on the back stretch is actually the furlong pole for the horse track, which is located inside this uh, pace run on the uh, smaller track to the inside. Now we're watching the ninth place Kent Schrader and 10th place Davey Allison, but up front it is still Bill Elliott who is setting the pace of the Delaware 500. He's followed by Mark Martin. We'll be back with more of our live coverage on this Sunday afternoon from Dover Downs International Speed. In. The leader, Mark Martin, is second, Alan Kowicki running third, Brett Bodine is fourth, and Rusty Wallace is fifth. In sixth position is Jeff Bodine, seventh is Morgan Shepard, eighth is Phil Parsons, ninth is Ken Schrader, and tenth is Davey Allison. And there you can see that Bill Elliott and Mark Martin have now begun to lap some of the slower traffic already, moving to the high side of the Buddy Arrington car, number 67, that's being driven this weekend by Brad T. Boy, Elliott and Martin are really setting a fast pace here. They have moved away from the third, fourth, and fifth place cars, and uh, surprising, really, that they've been able to do that. Boy, that is a some kind of race. You know Mark Martin winning the pole would like to lead some laps. I mean, he's really pressuring Bill Elliott. He wants to take the lead and just show what he can do. Um, Davey Allison and Ken Trader still side by side. That is amazing. Lap after lap, just racing side. And here comes Davey on up ahead. It looks like he's getting almost a little bit of push from Richard Rudd. Well, they're racing for ninth position here. Allison is in ninth, and then Schrader, followed by Rudd and Michael Walter. The average speed, 142.574. In Pitt Central, an update from Larry Newber. And our bad check was both the Daryl Walter crew and Dale Earnhardt crew, and nothing is wrong as such. But, uh, yes, you guys in the booth are absolutely right. They're not on the pace. Dale is unhappy with the tire setup. Uh, he's particularly talking about the standard, the difference between the sides and the right and left side. They're preparing the change right now. They're screwing over the tires. Daryl says the car is too loose. They're not worried about rain coming at least before the first pit stop. They both say, we'll change it to the first pit stop. We'll be better the next time around. 
So we'll continue to watch for the developments regarding those two cars. Meanwhile, on the racetrack in 10th position is Ken Schrader at number 25. and 11th spot is uh, Ricky Rudd at number 26. And then Michael Waltrip in car number 30 is 25. Laps have been completed out of 500. Bill Elliott now has a five-second lead over the third place car, which is being shown as Alan Kowick. Look at this racing here. Ricky Rudd trying to get around Ken Schrader. He turned sideways coming off the fourth turn that last year. Boy, he's really trying to open one. Let's go down to Dick Bergman in Richard Petty pit. Well, Gary, it appears as if Richard Petty is having a tire problem of some sort. No tire problems of any kind were anticipated today, but he did for an unscheduled pit stop for a right front tire. He has started to slow down a little bit. He was running good, and here comes another car that would be Eddie Beerswall coming into the pits as well but Richard Petty had moved up through the field a little bit and then all of a sudden he started to back tread and then he came into the pits so apparently had a tire going down and there is the number 21 car of Kyle Petty making a move on Michael Waltrip at number 30 and the lead is uh, being fought for now Mark Martin is making a bid on Bill Elliott Elliott has led the entire distance so far but here is Mark Martin in the number six car the pole sitter Trying to take over that top spot. It's the first pole position for the Stroh crew, led by Jack Roush. And they would like very much to record their first victory in Winston Cup competition. Now the race settles down just a little bit as Mark has fallen in behind Bill Elliott. But certainly these two cars, the class of the field in the first 28 laps. Now, Bob, I mentioned a moment ago that they were five seconds ahead of Alan Kowicki. I'll have to correct myself. That was ahead of Brett Bodine, who is running in fourth place. Alan Kowicki is only about a second and a half behind the front runners. And as a matter of fact, he is gaining on them at the moment. You can almost feel the determination in these two drivers. Bill Elliott wanting to lead the race. You know, he's been the top four driver for so long. And here comes Mark Martin along and wins the pole away from Bill Elliott and several others here at Dover. Then Bill Elliott charges in front, leads the first lap. Mark Martin really is determined to show that his car is faster than Bill Elliott. Mike, Mike Alexander in car number 12 to the inside of Michael Waltrip in car number 30 as Mike Alexander takes that position away. Mike has signed a deal with the Stravola Mothers for full-time employment next year. He's moving up through the field. He was the second round fastest qualifier. He said he, he's over in the corner. He just goofed up a little bit in the first round qualifying and re-qualified then yesterday afternoon or yesterday morning and got the second round fastest qualifier award. So he started 21st, but he is really moving up through the field. There is shuffling going on all over the racetrack. This is amazing. Uh, 31 laps into the race here at Dover. And some more side-by-side -side And Rusty racing. Wallace is in the pit. Rusty Wallace, an unscheduled pit stop. And so is Darrell Waltrip. Now, Waltrip's car had started going very, very high in the turns. We noted earlier that he was not handling too good. We watched this side-by-side -side battle between Kyle Petty and Kenny Schrader. Right side tires for Rusty Wallace, and it looks like they're going around to the left side as well, so it'll be four tires for Rusty Wallace. He'll go at least one lap down. And Morgan Shepard coming into the pit. Something a little unusual here. We really didn't expect tires to, to be any kind of a problem here today. Well, it looked like a flat right front on Rusty Wallace's car. We know Richard Petty had a flat right front. Here come the leaders, meanwhile, out of corner number four, and they race down the straightaway, and Mark Martin is right there on the back bumper of Bill Elliott, as both uh, Rusty Wallace, who had a blistered right front tire, and Darrell Waldrop have completed pit stops and moved back out onto the racetrack. Morgan Shepard, as we watch the action on the track, is still in the pit, so... Yeah, indeed, tires may be a factor here. We had not had any uh, evidence that there would be a tire problem in the practice and the qualifying, but indeed it could be as the race progresses. Boy, what a surprise. You know, this is, uh, all the cars started on Goodyear tires. The Goodyear tires were fast. The temperatures in practice were way, way within the means of uh, what we would think would be safe. Here's Ricky Rudd, apparently another tire problem. 34 laps in the race, and all of these cars are coming in. But this is the first time that they have run this many laps. You know, during practice runs, we have a car in the wall. wall. Mark Martin is in the wall in turns three and four. An unfortunate set of circumstances for the pole sitter of the Delaware 500. Mark Martin has come in contact with the wall in corners three and four. And if we uh, have this on replay, we perhaps can uh, see what happened. But could this have been a tire problem for him? I, I would guess that it was a tire problem for Mark Martin. Yeah, you know, when the leaders start coming in the pits like this, you're going to expect tire problems. Somebody, apparently Mark Martin had some type of tire problem. Here's a replay. 
Okay, he's following Bill Elliott into the turn, and just all of a sudden he gets loose, it looks like. Well, let's see, he's coming out of turn two, and we'll follow him up the back stretch going into turn three. It looked like the car was a little loose as he came out of that turn, then all of a sudden it, the right front tire must have gone flat because it just veered straight into the wall. He had no control over it, and, uh, of course, that's the reason for the caution out. Bill Elliott has come into the pits, and Jerry Punch is there to call the action. Well, a lot of concern down here. The tires that came off of Morgan Shepard's car and Darrell Wilson's car were blistered. The right front tires blistered badly. And now Elliott is in getting his right side. has already got right side tires. As you see, they are putting left side rubber on the floor and floor. And Dale Earnhardt's also a little bit of a Dick. I'm seeing blistered tires as well. And as Gary Nelson mentioned, everybody has thought this was going to be an easy day. We thought there was going to be no tire story at all. The tire temperatures were so cool, but just about everybody is taking off Goodyear tires that are blistered. No one understands why. No one knows what's going on. We saw no evidence of this in practice, but we've sure got it now. And it certainly isn't because we have warm temperatures here today. As a matter of fact, it's very overcast and pretty cool, actually, as Mark Martin has gotten out of his wrecked race car. We again take a look at what happened involving Mark Martin in the number six car, who was trailing Bill Elliott in second. And the car, as he went into turn three, just all of a sudden veered to the right and into the wall, and apparently the uh, right front tire went flat. And Ken Schrader has had a problem down in turn one. Let's see if we can pick up what his problem was just as the caution was coming out. Here he is coming off of the wall, so apparently he had a tire to go down. You can see the damage to the right front of the Folger Chevrolet, and that was just as the caution was coming out on the other end of the racetrack. So a significant development is occurring here in this race. Tires apparently are becoming a major problem. There is the Mark Martin wrecked car at the head of the straightaway. We'll continue this drama where the first caution flag of the day for the accident produced by Mark Martin in the wall. And here's the problem to everyone's surprise. Take a look at what's happening. A brand new tire, and they have had no problem all week in practice here, but in the early laps, we are seeing severe tire wear. This is blistering. This is not tire wear. I should say this is blistering. The tires are blistering and bubbling up. Chunks of rubber coming off. It's a brand new tire. This is Bill Elliott's right rear tire. A couple more laps when Elliott might have also been in the wall, so a break for him and not a break for Mark Martin. So Mark Martin's car heavily damaged in turn four. We are still under yellow here at Dover. Gentlemen? Boy, I can't imagine what all the action we're seeing here today. It's just unbelievable. The tire problem, what a surprise. Here's Ken Schrader, boy. His car hit the wall hard. We didn't even see it right at the beginning of that caution. Now look at what happens here in the pit road. Everybody's in the pits at once. There's tires laying all over. They're dodging them. There's one up there. Here's, yeah, look at this. Just scraping the wall, almost getting hit. There's a tire right in front of him. He's got a swerve. It's unbelievable how Rick Wilson missed all of that and still came out without any damage. So the Mark Martin car is now being lifted from the racetrack as the debris is being cleaned up there in turn three and four, and a new windshield is going in the Jeff Bodine car. Jerry Punch, what's going on? Well, Jeff Bodine happened to be in the wrong place at the right time. Debris came up and literally took his windshield apart. They brought him in here under caution, and they are trying to put this windshield back in. That's Waddell Wilson, the rest of the Levi Garrett crew, trying to tape the windshield in. They will not have time to bolt it in completely during this lap. They will bring him back in. And so a new windshield for Jeff Bodine. Let's go to Larry Newber. Larry? Well, Jerry, 500 miles is a common length for a Winston Cup race, but this place is not a common race. We have the tire problem that we think we're developing here, but perhaps the most important member, stress member of this race car at this racetrack is the engine. You don't measure really engine stress in terms of miles. You measure it in terms of the number of hours. And this is a race that could easily go well over four hours of speed up and start down. The engine may well be the most stressed member of the chassis here at Dover today. Plus, we're modifying that with this tire problem. Indeed we are, and that is the Mark Martin car being taken off the racetrack right now. He and Ken Schrader both come in contact with the walls as several had tire problems in the early going of this race. Back in a moment after this. For a Sunday afternoon edition of Speed World, and we're yellow for the first time this afternoon because of an accident involving Mark Martin. His car coming in contact with the wall in turn number four, and there is the Ken Schrader car that also had contact at the other end of this racetrack. The paved racetrack, there you can see the horse track facility, which is being uh, used here. One of the landmarks connected with the harness racing facility is located near turn one of the asphalt track. Here's a quick fact. 
of the unique features here at Dover Downs is this sky box located some 70 feet in the air above turns one and two. Now, this box serves a dual purpose. During the harness racing facilities, this box is where judges will sit and overlook the harness racing track. Now, you just overlook turns one and two of the harness facility determines there's been an on-track incident or foul during those events. Now, up until two years ago, this box served as NASCAR control. They actually ran the race from inside this sky box here over turn one. Now, that has since been moved atop the main grandstand area here. That is NASCAR control there above the main grandstand area. This box here is primarily for people who want to watch the race, get a good bird's eye view, some spotters for some of the crews, and even some safety officials to watch for on-track debris. And there's a live shot of that uh, facility, which is located, as we said, near turn one. Well, we're 42 laps in to 500 of the Delaware 500 under caution. We're back at Dover Downs International Speedway, and we are still under caution for the crashes involving Mark Martin and Ken Schrader, both drivers okay. Now, these uh, accidents apparently caused by some tire problems. We have seen it uh, in the early stages of this race. Dick Bergren has been studying this tire situation and can tell us exactly what it's all about, Dick. Well, Bob, here's what's happening. Everybody thought no problems with the Goodyears, but we're seeing problems. Why are we seeing problems? I just asked one of the Goodyear engineers, and he said, I wish I know. Maybe Richard Childress does. Childress said he thought maybe the problem was due to the fact that it rained hard last night. We have a green track. A lot of the teams, however, aren't sure. They don't know what to do. They don't know whether to stick with the Goodyears or switch to the Hoosiers. There's a whole trailer full of Hoosiers. And before the race, Bob Newton, who owns the Hoosier, Hoosier Tire Company, said, don't worry about a thing. My tires are absolutely reliable, even though they're a bit harder and not quite as, as fast as the Goodyear tires are. Well, that's what Goodyear thought, too. It's a big guessing game. And part of the guessing game is that the size difference between the Hoosiers and the Goodyears is fairly significant. That's going to affect the engines. Jerry Punch, what do you think? Well, that may have a problem, may have an effect, but it won't have an effect on Mike Walter. Take a look at his problem. The valve cover just came apart on the Walter Country Time Lemonade Pontiac. He's been in twice, and he finally changed the valve cover. He is back on the speedway and did not lose a lap. We're going green, gentlemen. And you can see that the number 27 car is the one that will lead them down for the restart. That's Rusty Wallace. However, he is a lap down trying to get his lap back. The 26 car of Ricky Rudd uh, apparently is also a lap down, and the leader of this race is the number nine machine driven by Bill Elliott who was actually fourth there in line. Ricky Rudd, Richard Petty, and Rusty Wallace had all made unscheduled pit stops. They're all ahead of Bill Elliott right now, but Elliott's about to put Rusty Wallace that lap down, and he does. Bill Elliott really has that car hooked up. You know, Bill Elliott being the point leader, Rusty Wallace trying very hard to regain some of the lost ground he lost at Richmond in the point race, and Dale Earnhardt having problems. Bill Elliott just looks like he's just failing away. Hard in the number three car is trying to move up through the traffic also. Behind him is the 17 car of Daryl Waltrip. There's the 55 of Phil Parsons. Davey Allison is also back there along with Mike Alexander and the number 11 car, the Junior Johnson prepared Budweiser sponsored Chevrolet driven by Terry Labonte. Daryl Earnhardt uh, fared best perhaps on this pit stop because he was back in the pack running about uh, 13th or 14th and he was in the top five, in fact, in fifth position when he came out of the pit. There you can see Earnhardt in fourth. Darrell Waltrip behind him. But Waltrip had made a green flag pit stop just before the caution came out. Boy, what a surprise, I think, for everybody. I had a conversation with the uh, head Goodyear engineer, the development engineer, this morning before the race, and he told me that, that things looked so good it was almost scary. The tire temperatures were all well within limits. Everything about the tire, was it was fast, the, the compound was right, all the cars in the race were starting on Goodyear, and then right away, or 30 laps in the race, tire blisters. So maybe it was that rain that, that washed all the rubber off the racetrack. Maybe this problem will go away as the race goes on. Well, in any case, it certainly gave us something to think about and to uh, look at for the rest of the afternoon here, as we are only 50 laps into this race, and some major tire problems have occurred already. And we saw those problems occur at about lap number 35 or 40, so we'll watch for the next uh, 25 or so laps to see if we might have a reoccurrence of those tire problems. Big David Allison might have a problem, Bob. He's slowed a little bit. He's back running about the uh, 12th position, and several cars are moving around him now, including Rick Wilson and several others. David put her down on the inside of the racetrack. That car is definitely not running up to par. He, he, here's... Uh, Rick Wilson, as we look out the rear window of his car, and you can see Davey Allison back there. That's late speed in the purple car right behind him.
behind Rick Wilson, but down on the inside, the white front end is the car of Davey Allison running on the inside of the racetrack at a slower speed. When they restarted from the caution, Davey was up in around fourth or fifth position, but he has dropped back significantly now and is continuing to do so as Benny Parsons goes to the outside, and now the number 75 car of Neil Bonnet is also passing. There is Benny in car number 90, and the number 10 car is driven by Ron, uh, Ken Bouchard, and that's the car that is right behind Davey Allison. Now back up front to check on what's going on there, and it's still Bill Elliott who is uh, showing the way and leading this race. That's Richard Petty and uh, Ricky Rudd ahead of Bill Elliott, but remember, those guys are just simply getting their last back car immediately behind Bill Elliott is the second place car. That's the 15 driven by Brett Bodine. Bob, we see Richard Petty there just ahead of Bill Elliott. Of course, Richard had made an unscheduled pit stop, so he's one lap down. Now, in years past, that would not have been a problem. In fact, I think Richard Petty was 13 laps down. It was a big number of laps down here at Dover one year and came back to win the race. But you can't do that now. The competition is absolutely too strong. Too many cars out there that are capable of winning. So those days are long gone when you can come from that far back and win. Well, you know, it's things like that, Ned, that have earned this track the reputation of being the monster mile. It's just so many different things happen here at Dover than anywhere else. There's no racetrack quite like Dover. It's, it's just shaped differently. It's really strange and, and puts different amounts of stress on the car in areas that we've never even thought about. And the drivers with 500 miles, a big problem with fatigue late in the race. This race is really just a different racetrack. We have a report that Davey Allison might have a pushing problem that his car is the back end is too tight, so he evidently got a mismatched set of tires. It must be a badly mismatched set of tires. And one thing, Gary, that he would not want to do is to run the car too hard because when the car is pushing, it will heat up in that right front, especially after we've seen the problems that we've had here today. Oh, you're right, Ned. If that car is pushing as badly as it looks like it is, that's got to be really overheating that right front tire. And you saw the, the shot of Mark Martin's tire. When it blew out, there was no steering at all. That car went straight to the wall, and it total lost that car. I mean, it's as narrow as that car was, after hitting the wall. we're lucky Mark Martin wasn't injured, and that car was awfully badly damaged. Maybe Allison continues to go to the back as Bill Elliott continues to set the pace. And is within about two car lengths of Elliott. Those two are first and second. The number seven car of Alan Kowicki is third. Mike Alexander shown in fourth position, and the 55 of Phil Parsons is fifth after 58 laps. Back with more of our live coverage, International Speedway in Delaware, where we are live for the Delaware 500 Winston Cup race. And with 63 laps completed, it is Bill Elliott in the number nine Coors Motorcraft Ford leading Brett Bodine and Alan Kowicki, Mike Alexander, and Terry Labonte. The car ahead of uh, Bill Elliott once again is the 43 car of Richard Petty. However, he is uh, now on the lead lap, but essentially a lap down. Ricky Rudd is also right there in car number 26. He, too, has gotten his lap back. And let's go to Pitt Central and Larry Newber. Well, Bob, remember that Ricky Rudd almost won the race a week ago at Richmond. And they were lapping this speedway at about the fastest speed of anybody on the crew watches and the late afternoon practice yesterday afternoon. Even though he started 19th, they had great confidence. They did not plan on dropping a lap down here because the tire problems of course early in the race. But here's a team that very much thinks they can win this race, and Ricky is now on the lead lap, but unfortunately, he's a distance of one lap behind. He didn't have a particularly good qualifying effort here uh, this weekend. However, uh, that really doesn't mean anything. It's more where you uh, finish the race than where you start the race. Rudd began back in 19th position, about five miles an hour off the pole speed. I'm very impressed with that uh, Kenny Bernstein team, the team that Ricky Rudd drives for. You know, they started off this season, and Ricky Rudd was new to the team, and they had other personnel changes, and it looked like they were having, really struggling in the early part of the season. Now it almost looks like they're gaining strength every week. They're, uh, they've been moving up in the points, moving up in the finishing. Here's uh, Terry Labonte and Shirley Marlin racing pretty close. Labonte's car has been smoking a little bit in the turn, smoking his tire just slightly. So he's going to have to really be careful as we get a little farther into the race to make sure he doesn't have any tire problems. This is fifth and sixth here. Terry Labonte in number 11, and in sixth spot is the number 44 car of Shirley Marlin. And while we have the opportunity, let us express our condolences to the Sterling Marlin family. His mom died this past week. Uh, Sterling did not qualify this car, but 
has put all that aside and is driving a fine race here at Dover. There's the leader, Bill Elliott, and right behind him is Brett Bodine. There is the number 21 car of Kyle Petty and Rusty Wallace, and Wallace's car still is just not performing up to snuff. And Barry Dotson, of course, is the crew chief uh, on this car. He's with Jerry Punch. was the points leader and has fallen to third as Jeff Bodine in the number five car. Racing behind now, the Hardy Volt will be driven by Dale Jarrett. Here comes uh, Jeff to the inside. Oh. And Kyle Petty has hit the wall. Richard Petty. Richard Petty. Boy, same type of thing, right front. He didn't hit as near as hard as uh, as uh, Mark Martin or Ken Trader. He's still able to control the car. He, he I think, was a little more prepared for it. Well, the crash comes on lap number 72, and we saw evidence of tire problems at about lap 35 in the first section of this race. Who knows, maybe this could have been tire-related also. We'll not uh, definitely state that, but uh, only speculate. A lot of smoke is coming from that Richard Petty car, as he's got it now to the inside of the racetrack in turn number three, and our second caution of the afternoon flies on Dover. We'll take another look at it. Richard Petty had the misfortune up in the first and second turn area. Okay, so it goes into the turn, taking the normal groove, Bill Elliott down on the inside, and all of a sudden, just like Mark Martin's car, Richard Petty's car veers to the right, and he flaps the wall not as hard as Mark Martin hit it, as Gary pointed out, but still enough to to do quite a bit of damage to the car, and here are the pit stops coming up. Bill Elliott's the first car in. Yeah, the race right now is between Bill Elliott and... Uh, Brett Bodine, who's pitted just ahead of Bill Elliott. The, the pits are really tight right now. Everybody's going to get four tires. Here down in Bowicki getting four tires. Everybody's trying to get four tires. Look at get another look at those tires. Let's go down to Jerry Punch and Rusty Wallace's pit. Well, they raise the hood. That's Harold Elliott, the engine builder, on the right side of the car. They look down beneath trying to find that plug wire, and they're hoping to find a plug wire. That's all. Elliott's out. Bowicki's out. So is Brett Bodine. But Rusty Wallace fits Bill in the pits with the Kodiak and Pontiac. They have changed rod spot tires, but the primary concern is in the engine compartment. Remember, Rusty currently third in that Winston Cup point race, and he has had a couple of weeks. Hey, and it fires off all eight cylinders. Rusty gives a big thumbs up, and now he pulls down and away. Let's get in here and get a comment from Harold Elliott as to what the problem actually was. Harold, what, was it a plug wire off? Yeah, he points it was a plug wire off. They're going to bring Rusty back in. So it was indeed a plug wire that has come off that car, but uh, hopefully now Rusty will have all eight cylinders and can make up the ground that he lost. So one of the problems you can have with a plug wire, as we watch Darrell Walker making a pit stop, Rusty Wallace is going to be coming in right in front of him. A plug wire can get alongside of the header. The headers are so hot it can burn through the plug wire and ruin it. So they may be thinking about replacing that plug wire. These aren't steel plug wires. They're made of a carbon material. You can see some weight being jacked there in the back of the Davy Allison car. Yeah, they did. This was a break for Davy Allison knees because he had really gone back through the field as we see Rusty Wallace back in with the hood up. But this was a break for Davy Allison to correct the problem that he had. And they did that in tire stagger and also making an adjustment on the chassis on the car. Well, what they are doing now, they're going to squirt some silicone around that plug wire, as Gary Nelson alluded to. They're going to try to insulate that wire from the heat of the valve cover where it runs down along the side of the engine. And Barry Dotson realizes how hot that is. He had his hand down against that header pipe and uh, got somewhat of a burn on his glove. Fortunately, he had a glove on that hand, but he did get quite hot. And they ground refire the car, and Rusty is down and away. Let's get a comment from Barry Dotson, who's uh, sitting here on the wall. Barry, I know you got your hand against that header, but it was a, was a plug wire off. Yeah, yeah, plug wire. 
talking to the driver right now. We'll try to get some. Is the hand all right, Barry? Is the hand okay? It burned. <laughs> <laughs> it burned, but he's busy right now, so we'll let him get to work. I don't imagine he feels a bit of pain from that burn because he's most concerned about uh, the Rusty Wallace car. Dick Bergman is also on pit road. Well, Bob, the winningest active driver in Winston Cup Racing here at Dover is in the pits with a torn up right front, and I mean torn up big time. Seven-time winner, Richard Petty. He's got a major problem. They just pushed him here with his engine silent. There was a wrecker behind him. He's not going to win this thing today, I am sure. But I will tell you, there is good news up and down pit road. The tire situation seems to be stabilizing. In this last round of pit stops, I only saw one blistered tire, and it was not badly blistered. That is far better than what we saw on the first round of pit stops. So maybe Richard Childress is right. He's a pretty smart guy, and he sure knows his tires. Maybe when we get a little rubber down in this racetrack, we're going to be fine. I hope so. Richard Petty has won this race four times. He has won on Dover Downs International Speedway a total of seven. Right now, we are 77 laps into this 500-lap event here at Dover Downs International Speedway as we bring you live coverage this afternoon of International Speedway, and we will be going green here in just uh, another lap. Pitt Central, meanwhile, Larry Newber has found Mark Martin. Well, Mark, uh, you stepped over here where you have an opportunity to watch some of the race. It was a tire blowing like so many people have had the same problems already, yes? Well, you know, it was just real unfortunate for the Strolite team. Uh, the car was running super. We had a, a real good chance to win this race. It was real early, and we were trying to take care of our stuff, but it didn't work out for us. Mark, I've seen you walking around. You must be sorry. A car went in a ton, but you're not hurt. Well, you know, I, I feel like I was really lucky the car was safe, and I want to tell Arlene and Heather and Rachel and Stacy and Amy and, and uh, everybody out there that I'm fine, and, and uh, you know, we're going to go get them next week. Well, Mark, we're just about ready to go back to green. You've got to be sitting here thinking, what would be going through my mind if I were in a race car? These guys must not feel comfortable at this point in the race. I'm sure that they're thinking that they're going to be taking it easy. It looks like they are. Uh, nobody's going to be trying to lead the race uh, real hard or, or keep the pace up too fast. You know, it's, it's real important right now to not tear a tire up and lose a lap by having to stop and change it or by tearing one up and not being able to feel it and have it blow out on you. So, uh, you know, I, I think that uh, I think the racetrack's going to get better as they go. All right, there is Terry Labonte in car number 11, and that car simply did not go. When the green flag came out, he dropped back significantly and now is coming in for a pit stop. The Junior Johnson Budweiser car is in with Labonte. He might have a tire going down. I don't think it would be related to the problems that we have seen earlier as, we, as he goes into the pit area, but they are going to change the right side. Apparently, one of the right side tires has just leaked down. Here's Morgan Shepard trying to get his lap back. He made an unscheduled green flag pit stop trying to pass Brett Bodine to get back in the lead lap. Brett Bodine is the leader of the race in car number 15. Morgan Shepard is a lap down trying to get it back, and Bill Elliott is in second position there in the number nine. Mark, uh, there's been a lot of speculation uh, up and down pit road. We've talked about it here in the booth as to why we saw these uh, tire problems in the first 35 laps. Can you tell us what your opinion is? Well, I really can't. Uh, we haven't seen the kind of temperature that would uh, cause this. I don't know. Uh, we, we didn't expect it. We didn't feel it. And I talked to Kenny Schrader. He said he didn't feel it either. We never dreamed of seeing anything like this, but we feel sure that the track's going to get easier, and uh, they're going to have a fine ra race today. And I'm just real sorry that we can't be a part of it. Uh, you know, we want to win real bad for, for Strolight and, and uh, for Jack Roush and all the guys that have worked so hard to put this deal together. And uh, I think it's coming, but, uh, you know, we're disappointed that we don't have a shot at it today. The car was really fast. Now, Mark, we're watching here uh, Brett Bodine and Bill Elliott. Elliott, of course, ran with you when you were in the race. Does he appear to you to be the strongest man out there? Bill uh, was really strong early in the race. Uh, as it got going, he... Uh, you know, he got, it looked like his car got tied and it started smoking the right front tire. And, you know, I started thinking about trying to pass him and uh, tried to make a couple of moves on him and uh, didn't quite make it. And my team called, uh, Steve Neal called me and said, go easy, you know, just take it easy. And I slowed down a couple of laps and then we had the problem. Uh, I think Bill probably got him covered and he's riding right now. Uh, he was probably as surprised as, I, as, as we were with the, you know, with what happened. I think you're right, Mark. I think that we're seeing a lot of drivers sort of ride right now as uh, they push Richard Petty's car into the pit area. Apparently, that's going to be, or into the garage area. Apparently, that'll be all for him today. Maybe too much, much damage for him to get back in the race. And here's Bill Elliott moving around Morgan Shepard. 
The number seven car there of Alan Kowicki is third. So there you have Brett Bodine, the leader, and then Elliott and uh, Alan Kowicki. Look at this. Dale Jarrett, Jeff Bodine, Harry Gant, and the 21 car of Kyle Petty involved in a great tussle for position out of turn number four. Saw a lot of tire smoke come off the right rear of Jeff Bodine's car coming off the turn that time. When they have to hold it down on the low groove, it really causes you to turn the steering wheel a little harder. And there's a good shot of Jeff's car from the inside of Dale Jarrett's car. The right rear tire on Jeff's car was smoking quite heavily as he tried to get under Dale Jarrett. And he's really trying hard right here. He wants to be able to use the whole racetrack. You can see him kind of fighting with the steering wheel. Boy, that is a that is a great shot. That's live coming from the inside of one car to the inside of the other car. Jeff on the inside, though, is about to lose that position to uh, Kyle Petty, or at least Kyle is trying to uh, take over that spot as they are wheel to wheel out there for the moment. Now Kyle inches ahead just a little bit. But it looks like maybe the inside is not necessarily the place to be, but Kyle Petty is going to try the inside on Dale Jarrett. Down the straightaway they come. The number 68 car, driven by Derry Cope, is right ahead of this group. Uh, he is not running with this uh, contingent of cars. There's Jarrett. Down the back stretch. Here comes Kyle Petty and Jeff Bodine. That is some close racing right there. That is, that is amazing, the camera work that we see these days on the live TV. This is... This is happening right before our eyes and out the window and on the screen. It's amazing. Back to the leaders, meanwhile. It is still Brent Bodine who is in the lead, but look at Bill Elliott as he is closed in now with him in about a car length and a half or two car lengths as they come down to complete lap number 90. And Alan Kowicki is also not very far behind in third position. Sterling Marlin has shown fourth in the serial, and fifth is Dale Earnhardt. Bob, we mentioned at the top of the show that Ricky Rudd had won this race two years in a row, and he had won it. This car number 15 is leading the race now that belongs to Bud Moore out of Spartanburg, South Carolina. This has been a very good racetrack for Bud Moore. He's had wins with Benny Parsons and several other drivers over the years. He just simply knows how to set a car up to get around this racetrack. It's, it's got to be the best kept secret in the garage area. Whatever Bud Moore does at Dover, nobody else seems to be able to figure it out. No matter who drives Bud's car, the Bud's car goes to the front. It's been in the circle so many times with so many different drivers. It's just, I think it's one of the best kept secrets in the whole NASCAR history because Bud Moore is a, it's a given. You come to Dover, Bud Moore's car is going to be up front. The fastest four qualifiers were in fours, and right now the top three are also in fours. Bodine, Bill Elliott, and Alan Kowicki. We'll be back with more live coverage after this from Dinkins, Ned Jarrett, Gary Nelson, Dick Bergren, Jerry Punch, and Larry Nuber back at Dover Downs International Speedway for the Delaware 500 Winston Cup race. They're the top three right there running nose to tail. It's Brett Bodine leading followed by Bill Elliott, and in third position is Alan Kowicki. We're almost a fifth of the way through this race, and for the highlights of the first 96 laps, here's Larry Nuber in the Central. Bob, Dover is always full of surprises, but this is one surprise that we had no way of anticipating. Tire problems. There is second running Mark Martin. He loses a right front tire and goes immediately into the wall, going into turn number three. It was a very hard hit for Mark, although he did not sustain any injuries. And at the same time, at the other end of the racetrack, a tire would go, a right front, we assume, and Kenny Schrader has hit the wall in turn number one. Both cars obviously eliminated from the event, but neither driver suffering injury. As the green flag came back out again, Richard Petty was in front of them. Leader Bill Elliott. Petty trying to get his lap back. Runs into the same exact problem that befell both Mark Martin and Kenny Schrader. Richard Petty has returned to the race. His car was not knocked out of the event. Inside the first 100 laps of this race here at the Monster Mile of Dover, this 500-lap race is quite a challenge to driver and crew alike. Out of race, Rodney Combs so far, Mark Martin, Ken Schrader, and Richard Petty, the following three, or the last three, of course, because of crashes. Rodney Combs had dropped out with mechanical difficulties just about five minutes before that first crash. All right, thank you, Larry, and you can add to that the number 74 car, Brandon LaJoy, just as you were updating us on the cars that had dropped out, he too pulled behind the wall, so Randy LaJoy in number 74 is also out of the race now. We're beginning to see a challenge for second position as Alan Kowicki is really closing in on Bill Elliott. They go to the high side and pass some slower cars, the number 80 machine being driven this afternoon.
afternoon by Jimmy Horton. That's also the number 67 car coming down the back stretch. Elliott in second. Alan Kowicki is right there, though, in third in car number seven. Three Fords still up front. You know, we've been seeing the front of the field being paced by Fords all along, and here it is again. Even Kyle Petty and a Ford running very strong. I think that uh, maybe there's more than, you know, we talked about horsepower briefly at the beginning of the show. Maybe the Fords had a different power curve, a different torque. But, you know, coming off the turn, like you can see here, Kyle Petty and Dale Jarrett. Dale Jarrett's pulling Kyle off the turn. So he's kind of, you know, Dale Jarrett maybe has the momentum, maybe the power, who knows. But I, in my opinion, I think that the Fords have a little bit better down on the, the rear of the car is pushing down better on the Ford than on the other model. This is the battle for eighth position, by the way. It is uh, Dale uh, Jarrett and Kyle Petty. It seems as if uh, Kyle will lose them on the straightaways, but then is able to pull in beside, uh, beside of uh, Jarrett in the turn. I think what Dale is doing is he's trying to conserve his tires as much as he can. He's running a little bit higher groove. He's running up second, third uh, groove. Kyle's running down on the inside and running a little bit deeper into the turn than is Jarrett. And uh, Jarrett has the momentum as he comes off of the turn, and that shoots it down the straightaway a little faster. It's quite an uh, ongoing uh, argument, almost, as why the Fords seem to have better tracks than others. But I'm, I'm leaning more and more towards aerodynamics. You can almost see it in this, this shot here, where where De uh, Kyle said he can pull up to Dale Jarrett in the turn, but when they get on the straightaway, he can't quite do anything with them. Look at how low he went, all right down to the line. He's getting some traction. He's getting some, whether it's down for it or just chassis configuration, whatever it is, the car is sticking better in the turn. And I think uh, the outside groove is working better. Kyle has dropped back now. You see, he was trying to pass Dale Jarrett there a moment ago. And I think he was tired of it and said, hey, I better cool it a little bit. Meanwhile, Harry Gant is running that same high line that Dale Jarrett is, and that is traditional for Harry Gant here at the Dover Downs International Raceway. He loves to run up there, and it's working for him right now. And you see he's able to move around, uh, or move up, uh, move around just the line, and that's on Kyle Petty. And that's the same uh, set of circumstances we saw yesterday, Ned, in the Grand National Race. Harry was the first to move up on the high groove. He really likes to run high. And really, Gary, that puts a little less stress on the tires and the chassis of the car. Well, you're right, Ned. You're running a bigger racetrack, uh, especially if your car is loose. You, you do better up high. If, if the back end's trying to get out from under you when you turn the wheel, you know, that, that's what we call loose. If that's happening to your car and you run a little higher on the racetrack, you're not turning the wheel as much and the car doesn't tend to get as loose. But also, on the same token, you're running a longer racetrack. It's, it's more, it's a bigger circumference around the racetrack. And now we move inside Rick Bilton's car as he has the 83 wins Kmart Oldsmobile driven by Lake Speed right ahead of him. As they battle for position. Some good racing going on. 31 car and is right ahead of Lake Speed. That's being driven by Jim Sauter this afternoon, the pink Slender U Oldsmobile. And right behind Rick Wilson is the car number 11 of Terry Labonte. Labonte made that unscheduled pit stop for a change of right side tires just after the green came out. And here's Davey Allison moving up. Now, Davey is running much better than he did a while back. So evidently the problem that he had, the pushing problem he had, uh, was cured during that pit stop. Well, you can imagine Davey was really hoping for a yellow flag. He was losing so much ground, falling back in the field. And we really think Davey's got a competitive car, a good chance of being a contender late in this race. But with that bad uh, tire problem or whatever it was that was causing his car to push, I'm sure he was really hoping for that caution. When Richard Petty hit the wall and caused him that caution, Davey looks like he's got that problem cured now. Yeah, he wasn't too far from being laughed at that particular point, but now he's certainly back in the thick of the battle. Yes, you're right. Junior Johnson, number 11, could very well be a Ford in 1989 competition as Junior Johnson apparently is very definitely considering the use of in uh, this series next year. You know, that's, that's an interesting comment, Bob. You know, uh, the people switch from one make to another make and they, they always have a list of reasons why, what, what, what prompted them to do that. But when you look at the whole circuit, there's better, there's each track has its favorite model of cars. So when you go through the whole the, the whole season, everybody's going to have a good chance all through the field. We have completed 110 laps here at Dover Downs, and here are the top 15. There you see Brett Bodine, Bill Elliott, Alan Kowicki, Sterling Marlin, and Mike. Car in the wall, up in turn four. 
it, Derek Coach and the pure later Ford, he was he running hit, in 13th position. He hit hard, or a tire blew or something, because we could hear the concussion here in the booth, and we're well enclosed from the racetrack noise, but he made uh, pretty good contact with the wall. You can see him moving around in there, so he apparently is not injured, but that car did make heavy contact with the wall in turn number four, and it brings out our third caution of the afternoon. So it's a tough break for Derek Cope, who was running uh, in the lead lap. He was running in the 13th position. We saw several cars passing Dale Jarrett, Harry Gant, and Jeff Bodine a while back, but he was uh, in contention still in the lead lap when he had this misfortune. You can see the uh, place where he impacted the wall, and now we'll replay it and see what happened. Okay, you can see him. he has already spun backwards into the wall. It looked like the right rear tire might have blown on the car and spun him around, and into the wall backwards. So there is Derry Cope, number 68 pure later car as the safety officials arrive at the scene of the crash. And here's everybody coming into the pit, including Brent Bodine at number 15, Bill Elliott at number 7, Dick Bergren is on pit road with Alan Kowicki stop. And Alan Kowicki is in. He's only got two full-time crew members this week. He lost one during the week. Most of the other teams have 17 or 18 full-time crew members. But these guys are, many of them are not pickup crew members, but they work hard at it. Brett Bodine down pit road, also in with Jerry Punch. Jerry? Well, they've already put right side tires on. They're working on the left side of the race, and then we'll get off pit road first. Here's Elliott and Bodine down. They almost collide on pit road, and Bill Elliott will win that race down pit road. So Bill indeed does get out first. There is Brett Bodine falling in right behind him. So we're going to have a change of uh, leadership here when the green comes back out. That is assuming that neither car comes in for another stop. Meanwhile, it's going to take a few minutes here to get the Derrick Cope car off the racetrack. He's had contact with the wall in turn number four. We'll take a break and be right back with more from Dover. Back at Dover, third caution period of the afternoon. We're now 113 laps in. Derry Cope's car being pulled off of the racetrack in the turn four area. He has uh, impacted the wall there. You can see him uh, leaking some fluid down the racetrack, so the crew will have to clean that mess up before we go back to racing. Most everyone has come in for uh, some pit stops. There you can see a couple of more peeling in the pits, including Ken Bouchard in car number 10 and Dave Marcus in car number 71. So the pace of the race is reduced here with uh, Bill Elliott at the uh, head of the field. You know, there are lots of unique aspects about this track they call the Monster Mile, and Jerry Punch reports on one of them in this track fact. Incredible mile. One of the more incredible features about this racetrack is behind me. That's an air-conditioned grandstand that actually serves as the main grandstand for the harness racing facility. Now, this track is actually a track inside a racetrack. The asphalt track for the stock cars on the outside and the harness facility on the inside. Another incredible feature is this back straightaway, banked nearly 18 degrees. It's almost the same as the banking in the turns. The turns are banked roughly 21 or 22 degrees. Another interesting feature here at Dover is this six-foot concrete wall it separates the back stretch from the harness track. In fact, the back straightaway is below ground level, some six feet below ground level. A very narrow apron separates what is the back straightaway from this concrete wall, which, of course, is the buttress for the harness racing facility. Doesn't leave much room for error here for a driver mistake in the back stretch. We're glad you could join us on this Sunday afternoon for Winston Cup competition at Dover Downs International Speedway. We'll be right back with more coverage. We have just gone green to resume the Delaware 500 at Dover Downs, and the lead is held by Bill Elliott. That second car in line there is Morgan Shepard in car number 88. He is not on the lead lap. Second is Brett Bodine in number 15, the third car in line there, running in uh, the third position would be Dale Earnhardt, fourth is Sterling Marlin, and fifth is the number 12 car driven by Mike Alexander. In sixth place is Alan Kowicki, Dale Jarrett is seventh, and in eighth position is Bobby Hillen, Harry Gant runs ninth, and in tenth position is the car number 90, I believe, of Benny Parsons. No, make that number 83 of Lake Speed, and then Benny Parsons. The number 11 car there, Terry Labonte, is also trying to get a lap back. He is not on the leader lap. Running right behind Brett Bodine. 121 laps are completed now. The race beginning to settle down just a little bit after a very interesting beginning. Oh, definitely. You know, we saw a real close race in the pits just before we went to this commer last commercial break. 
uh, Brett Bodine came into the pits under caution, leading the race. Bill Elliott was in second place, and they were just almost inches apart leaving the pit area. But that's the difference right there on the racetrack. Bill Elliott now is the leader by with one car between them who was down on the inside on the restart. So Brett Bodine lost it in the pits, lost the lead in the pits, and now he is hanging in there in second. And here is the number three car of Dale Earnhardt, the 44 of Sterling Marlin, and the 12 car of uh, Mike Alexander. All of those cars are battling for the third position. Marlin right alongside of Mike Alexander, who's given that uh, Miller Highlight Buick a very good run. Mike likes this racetrack. He drives it very well. He's had some good runs here in Bush Grand National Competition, now having a good run today in the Bobby Allison car. And there is Alan Kowicki, who has also joined the fight for this position. The average speed of the race has fallen because of the caution to 106.012 miles an hour. Now, uh, Mike Alexander has taken away that position from Sterling Marlin, and here comes Alan Kowicki to also try to get four spots make that fifth spot as Alexander is in fourth and now Alan Kowicki on the inside side by side door handle to door handle with the Sterling Marlin and the number 29 car of Dale Jarrett is right behind this battle for position. Doesn't look like Sterling Marlin's car number 44 the Piedmont Airlines car is handling quite as good as it was before. Maybe he got a mismatched set of tires on that change during the caution period. You can almost see as he makes uh, Sterling Marlin makes corrections on the steering wheel. The car kind of tries to drift down he pulls it back down Right, right there. You can see that as he's coming off the turn, he's correcting for it. He's right on the edge of track, and he's trying to hold on to that position, and these other cars seem to be just a little bit faster. There you see him trying the very low side on the racetrack, right against the line, drifting out against the wall. Now, he's, as he goes into this turn, he might try low again, might try high. He's still searching for whatever he can do to make that car go as fast as he can until he can get more adjustment. Looks like the car might be a little bit loose, and when we use that term, that the back end might not be sticking quite as tight when he goes into the turn as he would like for it to. Yeah, you're right, man. You can see the back end out farther than the front end, especially when you can compare it to that white line down on the bottom of the, uh, the racetrack along the apron. So Alan Cole will keep this. Sterling Marlin there in the blue and white Piedmont cars in sixth, and Dale Jarrett, with whom we are running right now, is in seventh position. There is the lead, meanwhile, still being held by Bill Elliott, and Morgan Shepard has been unable to pass him and get his lap back. You know, Mark Martin was uh, the first car out of the race because of the crash. He was the pole sitter. Only two pole sitters have won the Delaware 500. Back in 76, Cale Yarbrough, 73, Pearson, side-by-side -side racing here as Mike Alexander has taken over the third position from Dale Earnhardt, or at least he's trying to, about a half a car length now, going into turn number one. Earnhardt is trying to save off the challenge, but, oh, and Alexander gets a little bit sideways, enough for Bill, uh, rather Dale Earnhardt to get the nose back underneath Mike Alexander. A good battle here for third spot as Earnhardt just won't give up. Well, you can imagine Mike Alexander having the thrill of his life. He's really enjoying himself here. Dale Earnhardt's testing him, you know, running close to him. He, he's building up the trust. You know, Mike Alexander fairly new to Winston Cup racing, but not new to stock car racing. So many years he's driven those uh, uh, Grand National cars. Now here he is passing Dale Earnhardt. That's got to be one of his dreams. All of this in front of Dale Jarrett, the Hardy car. Now we see Earnhardt losing one more position. Alexander has moved to third. Fourth now is Alan Kowicki at number seven. And Sterling Marlin is about to take a position, another position away from Dale Earnhardt. So Earnhardt may be having some trouble with that number three car as Morgan Shepard is trying desperately to get his lap back and get around Bill Elliott. Their door handle to door handle into turn number three and four. Now Morgan is really having to punish his car or it's the tires on it at least right now, but he has no choice but to do that if he's going to get back and have a chance of winning this race. He's got to get back in the lead lap, and he knows that. So he's driving her hard trying to do that, but he's really punishing the tires. It's almost as if he's bringing Brett Bodine along with him. Brett running a little lower right there on the racetrack than Bill Elliott. We'll have to watch. Brett was almost pulling away before the last caution. So Brett, El Brett Bodine and Bill Elliott both look awful strong here. I believe Bill Elliott is uh, is just running as fast as he feels he needs to at this point of the race. I, I don't think that he's punishing his car or his tires. He's just trying to ride. It's a long, long way to go yet, and he knows that that's what you have to do to win here at Dover because he is the best winner here. The starting position that has uh, the most winners here at 
Dover Downs International Speedway is the third part of starting spot, and Bill Elliott started third in this race. The 12 car of Mike Alexander and the 7 car of Alan Kowicki and the 44 of Sterling Marlin. Gary Punch is, uh, is watching this uh, performance by Mike Alexander. Well, I'll tell you, the Savola brothers are really impressed with young Mike Alexander. The 31-year-old driver from Franklin, Tennessee, started back in 21st spot. He is now running third, which you shouldn't be surprised because the Savola cars always run well here at Dover, Delaware. Bobby Allison has won seven times up here, and he has won so well in the past. You know, last week, they announced that Mike Alexander will drive this car next year, and they will have a car available for Bobby Allison continues and hopefully Bobby will be back next year. The Savolas will have Bobby Hillen, Mike Alexander, and they will have the car for hopefully the leader of the Alabama gang, Bobby Allison, when he comes back. But an impressive performance right now. Mike Alexander running third. Nick Nick? Well, I'm down here. I'm down here in the Rick Wilson pit, actually, Jerry, and what I'm watching is Wilson went out with a set of Hoosier tires a little while ago. But apparently they decided they're not to their liking. They're going to bring Wick Gripson in, and they've got a set of good gear tires on the outside of the car. Larry Newber? Well, Dick Allen is running very competitively in the top five. You know, he almost won the poll here as we look at Rick Wilson, who has come in for a pit stop, perhaps a precautionary tire change. And Dick Bergman is there. We're going to Dick. Come back and finish my top on the pit stop. Show for Dick. Well, they have changed the outside tires on Wilson's car. They're going to have to change the inside. This was a very, very costly experiment to try a different set of tires, but they really felt that they had to give it a shot. They're the only team so far that has done so, but apparently it just hasn't worked. Rip Wilson sitting here in the pit area. Wilson is now gone. Larry Newman, what's going on at your end? Entering the scanner radios down here at our end, and we picked up the following back. First of all, about the tires that we've been talking. Wicky is not having the same tire problems. There he is on your screen. The Xerox number seven is not having the same tire problems as all the other top teams have been having. And thinking back to Watkins Glen, when we had another serious tire problem on ESPN, the team that early in the race was not flashing great speed but was commenting that they were not having tire problems was Ricky Rudd. He went on to win that race. Now, a couple of other extraneous notes as we look at Alan Ricky going underneath. Uh, Mike Alexander, Sterling Marlin trying to follow through. Marlin on the inside there in the Piedmont Old, who's under young Mike Alexander. The number 67 car, Buddy Erickson's car, is being driven by Brad Teague today. They have tried Hoosier tires, and they have radioed back that they are having the same phenomenon with the Hoosiers that they had in the Goodyear's meeting. They were expressing concern. And from Daryl Walter Pitt, Jeff Hammond has radioed to Jeff, or radioed to Daryl. Time to pick it up, Daryl. So the tire situation certainly is still very much a factor in this race. Let's take a look at the top 15 as we have them with 140 laps completed. It's Elliott, Bodine, Kowicki, Marlin, and Mike Alexander in the top five. Six through ten, Earnhardt, Jarrett, Hillen, Speed and Bodine, and then 11 through 15, Rudd, Gantz, Sauter, Allison, and Petty. 500 and Morgan Shepard at car number 88 has gotten his lap back. He was able to go underneath of Bill Elliott, and so we have another car on the lead lap. But the lead is held by Bill Elliott, and right behind him in second place, this but more prepared for Crisco sponsorship. And the driver is Brett Bodine from Chemung, New York. Now, uh, whole bunch of racing going on uh, in the top 15. That's Jim Sauter in the number 31 car, Jeff Bodine in number 5, Davey Allison in 28, also in the group is the 21 car, driven by Kyle Petty as they contest position. And the caution is out. Yellow out on the racetrack for the fourth time. We don't see anybody in uh, any trouble anywhere on the track, perhaps just some debris or whatever. But anyway, the caution flag is being displayed by Harold Kinder. By the way, we have uh, noticed that Ken Schrader in car number 25, who was involved in our first caution of the afternoon, he made some contact with the wall up in the first and second turns. He is back in the race, although the car looks a little bit more like a modified than it does a Winston Cup car. So the caution out again, we're going to see some wholesale pit stops, we believe, as here they come, Bill Elliott and... Brett Bodine, Jerry Punch is in Bill Elliott's pits as he stops for his routine maintenance. Go ahead, Jerry. We'll watch this race on pit road again. Remember, Bill Elliott won it last time. He and Brett Bodine, they will go to the right side of the 
car. They only had the right side tires off. Alan Kowicki's then taking right side tires as well. The jack off the right side for Elliott comes around to the left side. Left side tire now coming off of the Bill Elliott car. They put those tires on. Now they're going to the left side of the Alan Kowicki Z-Rex car, but Elliott's car off the jack. Great pit stop for Bill Elliott. He's the first one down. Brett Bodine leaves, and they are still working on Alan Kowicki's car. His car is getting left side tires. Still on the jack. And now he is down. Alan Kowicki. Like just about uh, identically timed pit stops there by Bill Elliott and uh, Brett Bodine. Uh, Elliott got out first. Kyle Petty is going back out. So is Jeff Bodine. So is uh, Ricky Rudd. And that is the group that we were following there as the yellow came out on the racetrack. And the reason for the yellow, Bobby, is that there was a piece of metal on the front straightaway just coming off a of turn four. So that was the reason for our fourth caution. Something coming out of Bill Elliott's car, it looks like, as Ooh. he comes off of the turn. It might have been uh, fuel, maybe just from the overflow, but there definitely was some fluid coming from the back of the car. It looks okay now, so we'll check it out after a little bit. And so Bill Elliott uh, is going to uh, see if that uh, could be a problem indeed. Now remember, Morgan Shepard had gotten his lap back, and the yellow came out, of course, and he now is positioned on the back flag. And there, as I told you a few minutes ago, is the number 25 car of Ken Schrader that is back on the racetrack, despite the fact that it's got some damage on the right side and on the front of the car. We'll be right back. World today at Dover Downs International Speedway in Delaware for the Delaware 500 Winston Cup race. Being brought to you by Goodyear Eagle Tires. Goodyear, because there really is a difference. By Xerox, the antifreeze coolant for extreme conditions. By Purolator, the first name in filters for Pure Oil Now and Pure Oil Later, it's Purolator. And by Wagner Halogen Headlights, the only headlights with a lifetime warranty. The crowd rises to its feet once again as the green flag is about to come out over at Dover Downs once again to resume our competition. Harold Kinder displays the green, and Bill Elliott leads him down for the restart. And as they got the green flag, Michael Waltrip in the Country Time Lemonade car number 30 got the black flag, so apparently there was a rule violation as far as he was concerned. So Michael Waltrip will have to come in for at least a stop and go count. Looking out the back glass of the... Uh, car camera that we have. We're looking from the uh, car driven by Rick Wilson. Another one of those situations where Bill Elliott just barely beat Brett Bodine out of the pitch. You know, we've been talking about Dale Earnhardt's pit crew for a couple of years now, but some of the other very good pit crews belong to Bill Elliott, Brett Bodine, and Rusty Wallace. They're, they're so close, it's almost hard to tell the difference on them. But Brett Bodine getting beat out of the pit just slightly, then he gets a lap car in between them, and he has a little bit of racing to do to catch back up. And Earnhardt's crew continues to do good work, Gary, in the pits. He went in running in seventh position, came out running third. Now, the number four car of Rick Wilson is not on the leader lap. And he is uh, running the high side of the racetrack. Brett Bodine, number 15, is second. of the uh, Kodak car is also not on the lead lap. And there we, we can see now the movement from Brett Bodine as he tries to move to the inside and pass Rick Wilson, but has not been able to do so so far. That inside is tough to pass down there today for some reason. The, the higher groove just seems to be working better. Yeah, Dale Earnhardt moving right in there too. You know, NASCAR, the way NASCAR restarts the races, the cars in the lead lap have to be on the outside and anybody who is a one or more laps down lines up on the inside that kind of bunches things up and it really in a lot of cases gives the leader the guy who comes out of the pits first gives him a break on the start because that lap traffic is trying to get their laps back especially early in the race like this they're going to race trying to, to be in a position to gain a lap back if the yellow comes out so that makes it tough for the second and third fourth place start to deal with that lap traffic while the leader's pulling away with clear sailing He is actually fourth in line there, but he is in third spot. And right behind him is Rusty Wallace, who is also not on the lead lap. And speaking of not being on the lead lap, Ken Schrader, as we saw before we went to commercial, is back in the race. He has a deficit of 110 laps to make up. Probably will not be a winner here. points in 1988 running third here this afternoon with 157
been last completed. Ned asked him earlier, has this been one of your better tracks, or do you consider it one of your worst tracks? Well, I hadn't, Ned. I've, I've run real good here at times, but seem not finished good here. Uh, I think it's my worst racetrack on the, on the schedule right now as far as finishes, but uh, I enjoy racing here. I don't have any problems running here with the car and everything. We're just, uh, you know, just getting to the end of the race is my biggest problem. It's a tough race. Uh, we always seem to have a little problem or tires or something, but hopefully we got a good combination for this weekend. We'll be okay. Never finished 500 miles here at Dover, looking to do so for the first time in his career this afternoon. Dale Earnhardt from Kannapolis, North Carolina. He'll, he's still struggling to pass Rick Wilson here. Well, you know, people talk about different tracks and different things. There are so many variables that go into winning nowadays in Winston Cup racing. You think about Dale Earnhardt. He just dominates on some tracks. Bristol, for example, just, just goes away. And here we have Bill Elliott dominating here at, at Dover so far in this race. So this is really a Bill Elliott track. This is a uh, rumor to be, uh, I think it's a pretty true rumor, to be a Ford track. So Bill Elliott has a combination this week on this particular racetrack. Then, you know, next week we go to Martinsville, maybe somebody else, maybe it's a uh, Dale Earnhardt type track, maybe a Rusty Wallace type track. It, it just shuffles back and forth. That's what makes this competition so interesting throughout the season. Fellas, I think that we're seeing Dale Earnhardt drive a different kind of a race here today than we normally see Dale Earnhardt drive. I believe that he is absolutely determined to try to finish this race and have his shot to win at the end of the race. while he's thinking about what he's saying you know he said i've never finished the 500 miles here i always seem to have trouble getting to the end he was thinking about that very thing while he was saying it and i think he's thinking about it right now there's a lot of time involved in this race from start to finish over four hours from the time you start the race to the time you shut it off at the end of the race and you've completed 500 miles there's a lot of tracks where you complete 500 miles in, in three or three and a half hours so there's a lot more stress for a lot time on the engine here at Dover. So Dale Earnhardt is entrenched in third position at the moment, and what was a very cloudy, overcast, and gray day is suddenly becoming a very pleasant afternoon as the skies are beginning to clear off and the sun is beginning to poke its head through these clouds here in Delaware. Bob, let me give a call to uh, number two son, Dale Jarrett. He's, uh, he came out of the pits running in sixth position. He's moved around Mike Alexander now, taking over fifth. He just moved around Sterling Marlin and has taken over fourth. Dale is having absolutely the best run of his Winston Cup career. Well, that car does look good going through the turns there, Ned. You know, he is running a pretty smooth line. He's running a little higher than most of the others, but he's running an awful smooth line. And I think that, and, well, right now, <laughs> as I said, he runs down on the bottom. But he, as we watched him earlier in the race, he's running a little higher. And that's kind of a, a more conservative, let's wait around to the finish type attitude, I think, that he's approaching the straight There's the number three car right ahead of him. And now uh, we see out back of the Kodak right behind the uh, Rick Wilson car. So indeed, Jared in a fine run here, running fourth with 165 laps complete. We'll be back in just a moment. It continues to lead this race with Brett Bodine in second position. There is Elliott crossing the stripe and completing lap number 169. Brett Bodine is not too far behind. In fact, is staying right up there with Bill Elliott. There he is, Bodine, car number 15. Brett is running a very good, smart race here today. He's been in the top five most of the afternoon, kept himself in condition, led the race for a while, doing what he needs to do. And it looks like he's slowing down right now as we talk about him. Pulls to the inside of the racetrack. Evidently, he lost the cylinder or something too bad for Brett Bodine. As we were just talking about what a good run he was having. He was headed for the pits. He, uh, he was turning towards the pits, and he turned out like uh, maybe there's something on Maybe there's some reason Bud told him to do something, turn around the, one of the switches, try a few other things before come, actually coming into the pits. But he, he is slowing down. It, Bill Elliott now has a little bit of a break, but we'll have to see what Brett Bodine's problem is because he still could come back. Now it's a tough break. As you can see, everybody passing him and Brett limping to the pit area. Jerry Punch is in his pit and can tell us what's going on, Jerry. Well, we are told they have broken an axle, and they have broken an axle. They are, he is 
making his way down Pitt Road, and he continues on by, and he will make his way to the garage area. We have Greg Moore with us here. Greg, what seems to be the problem? Uh, Jerry, it seems it's a broken axle or something in the rear end. This one wheel on the one wheel pulling. We don't really know what's going on here next. That's Greg Moore, who's the son of Bud Moore. They will go in and try to work with the car, and Dirty Elliott comes over and talks to Greg Moore and wishes him well, and they will go in and try to get the car fixed and get Brett Bodine back on the street. Tough break. Common problem, Gary, broken axle? No, not common at all, and I, I really kind of doubt if it is a broken axle. I don't, you know, the way the car acted, uh, I've seen cars with broken axles run a lot faster than Brett was running. Uh, he, he does have a serious problem, obviously, but uh, we'll have to watch and see what they what they discover. Bill Elliott now with about a four-second lead over Dale Earnhardt, who is running in second place. Dale Jarrett is now moving up... Uh, on Dale Earnhardt, about four or five car lengths behind him. Greg Wilson is also slowing down. He's got his hand in the air, signaling to the drivers behind him. So the Kodak car is also in trouble here and dropping to the apron, now entering the pit area. Rick Wilson is in for an unscheduled pit stop. See what this is all about, whether it's just a tire or whether they're going to raise the hood on the car. He slows it down, gets it stopped. They go to work on the right side, changing the rubber over there. No indication that there's a problem within the engine compartment. Jerry Punch can tell us, perhaps. Well, Tony Glover and the rest of the Kodak crew are changing right side tires. Apparently, so they look at the car, and it must have been a right side tire. And they have to the car down the way. And both of them head back on the speedway. Let's go to Dick Bergeron. Dick. Well, Jerry, I'm in the garage area with Brett Bodine. Brett, you just stood on the gas hard. Your mechanics watch, and only the right rear tire left the tire mark. What does that mean? Well, it looks like we broke an axle, Dick. Uh, I just can't believe it. I really thought today was going to be our day. You know, as good as the car was running, and Bill and I just pulled away from everybody. It was a two-car race. I just hate it for everybody. Uh, I don't know what I got to do to win a race, but we're going to win one before the year's over. You are looking at the face of bitter disappointment. Brett Bodine had his hands in his face just a few moments ago. He absolutely couldn't believe he was out of it. He was running so well, and our hats off to him, but it's just one of those unfortunate set of circumstances that occur during the heat of battle. So Bill Elliott now has a little bit of breathing room. He is... Uh, Definitely uh, in the lead, and Dale Earnhardt now is second. Now, if we continue to see a repeat of what we have seen so far, we'll be looking for pit stops and perhaps drivers running into some tire problems within about five laps. So when we return, we'll develop that story for you from the Delaware 500. Freshman from his uh, starting position to his current second-place status. He started the race in 17th. At the end of 50 laps, he was 13th. Moved up to 12th at the end of 75. At the end of 150 laps, he was 6th. And now, with 183 laps completed, Dale Jarrett is running in second position. The number 26 car is in the pit area. That's Ricky Rudd. He is in and out of the pits, by the way. We'll begin to see some stops, as we predicted, as Terry Labonte is also in for a pit stop. And further up pit throw toward turn number four, Brad Nopsinger is in in the number 98 Sunoco sponsored car. We had word that Ricky Rudd might have had a tire problem. Now, remember, early in the race, he was one of the first ones that had blistered a tire, and he came in. And we hear that maybe he might have had a similar situation now. The sun is shining here at Dover this after now it was overcast when we first started this race but the sun is out now and gary that could make a difference in the tire temperature situation but you sure are right you know uh with the, the cool temperatures the overcast skies that we started the race with we have only one problem to worry about and that was the rain that had washed the rubber off the track causing the tires to overheat that started correcting itself and getting better and better as we went now the sun's coming out the track temperature is going to be much higher Dale Earnhardt is pitting under green as Bill Elliott continues to lead. And there is the Richard Childress, Kirk Shelverdine crew changing rubber on the right side of that car. Jerry Punch can call the stop. Well, the Goodrich crew changing rubber on the right side of the Chevrolet. They pull the jack. Dale Earnhardt down and away in 11.7 seconds. That is a quick trip stop. And that's the kind of performance that's made him a champion for the last couple of years. Very strong performance by that pit crew as Earnhardt begins to pick up speed. There is the leader, Bill Elliott, staying out there and not choosing to come in for another pit stop at the moment. 
Benny Parsons made a pit stop also in bullseye barbecue sauce forward. We haven't heard much of Benny. He has run a good race today, good steady race. He was in the lead lap before he made this green flag pit stop. That will put him a lap down, but others will have to come back and make pit stop before too long. Earnhardt went a lap down too. Well, you know, we were talking about the track temperature rising, especially as the sun's coming out here recently. What that does, it changes the handling on the car. Uh, a car that was running, say, neutral before the sun came out and the temperature started coming up is now going to find itself a little looser. And so these guys are going to have to adjust as, the, as the, they come into the pits and make their pit stops for the changing track conditions. All along, more and more rubber is going down on the racetrack, and that's also changing the track. All of these cars are going to be shuffling back and forth for the next 100 or 200 laps, trying to hit on that magic setup and trying to predict what the conditions are going to be at the end. Everything working well for Bill Elliott. There is uh, Dale Jarrett in second in the 29 car. Sterling Marlin is at the moment in third position. There's the interval between first and second. You can see that uh, Dale has quite a bit of distance between uh, himself and the leader, Bill Elliott. As Elliott comes off of corner number four. He's got number 192. He's running about seven seconds ahead of Dale Jarrett. At the moment, another of the front runners, Blake Speed, is just completing a pit stop to change right side tires on his K-Mark Lynn special. And his out. Car number 98, we saw him go by. They've been pushing that car down pit road, apparently headed toward the garage area. Brad Nopsinger, the driver, one of the rookie contenders on the Western Cup circuit this year. Jerry Punch uh, is in Ricky Rudd's uh, pit. Jerry, another tire problem for Rick. Well, we're seeing more and more problems, Bob. In fact, uh, these pit stops are really unscheduled stops for the majority of these guys. This is the right front tire off Ricky Rudd's Quaker St. Buick. And you see where my ink pan, this is all canvas. The rubber is completely gone, just disintegrated, as Larry McGriddle said. Did our right front tire just blew apart. Take a look at it. Boy, did we ever. And a lot of crew chiefs that come over here and look at this tire and just shook their heads and said, hey, what are we going to do now? So a lot of unscheduled pit stops and a lot of concern, primarily because the sun came out and it's heating up here at Dover, as we can see by this tire. Gentlemen? So we did uh, anticipate a tire problem uh, a few laps ago, and indeed it is occurring at least on the number 26 car driven by Ricky Rudd. But no problems at the moment for uh, the number 9 car of Bill Elliott, but Harry Gant is coming in for a pit stop. As the Travis Carter crew uh, goes to work on it, changing the rubber on the right side. Dent was running in the 11th position before he came into the pit. The number 17 car of Darrell Waltrip also in. All of this occurring under green flag conditions. Alan, can you quick a pit stop as possible? Darrell's back out. And Alan Kowicki comes in. Alan Kowicki was running in the fifth position before he came in fifth. Let's go to Dick Bergman in his pit. And every trading up and down pit road is ready to do a pit stop. Kowicki is in. Everybody's pretty much doing the same thing, taking on right side tires. I've seen a few blister tires, but I've seen more that are not blistered than are. Unfortunately, Kowicki's right front is one that's got a huge blister in it. It's got three inches in diameter. So perhaps we're not seeing as much of a tire problem, but there is still evidence of that. As Alan Kowicki and Ricky Rudd we know of, have had blistered tires here in just the last few laps. Boy, so close to the edge. You know, the little bit of rain, or the, well, it was pretty a, a pretty hard rain last night, affected the early stages of the race. Then things started getting better. Now the sun's affecting it again. And really, these crew chiefs are really aware of what's going on. The drivers are aware of it. They know that it, you can make a pit stop early in the race like this, or, or even before the middle stages of the race, and get that ground back. But you can't get the ground back if your car runs into the wall. So they are going to be a lot more conservative in this stage of the race. Here's a good battle for yep. the third position. That's Sterling Marlin about to be passed by the car number 12 of Mike Alexander, but Alexander couldn't make the pass that time. So Sterling Marlin in car number 44 and Mike Alexander battle it out for third spot here. Down the back stretch, Marlin holding on to third as Mike Alexander is trying to take over that position. Bobby Allison has got to have a smile on his face as he recuperates in Alabama from his Pocono injury, seeing a fine performance in his car by Mike Alexander. Bob, uh, car number 31, Jim Sauter, is being given the black flag at the moment. He might have uh, some leaking fluid from that car, and NASCAR is trying to get him in the pit as Phil Parsons comes in. Old Crown Classic Oldsmobile. Phil was running in the seventh position. 
You know, Bob, you were talking about Bobby Allison, and, uh, you know, the time I spent with Bobby Allison, we won three races here at Dover, and if there was ever a track suited to a driver, this Dover track was suited to Bobby Allison's style. He would just cruise along, a lot like what Billy Elliott is doing now, lead the race, maybe run second, maybe run third, but he was always so confident when we came here to Dover. We really miss you, Bobby. We hope, we hope you come back soon. Everybody on the ESPN staff. There is Elliott, and he is just uh, running away with things at the moment. Is going to need a pit stop before too long. What do you think, guys? Well, he, he has not abused his tires. He has run a good line. He has run uh, fast, but still he has not had to abuse his tires. He's been running out front there, picking his way around the traffic. And uh, don't think that he'd have to stop for a while yet as far as fuel is concerned. So he might be able to go another 15 or 20 laps. Yeah, I would think so, Ned. Bill Elliott is really, he really has a good feel for the car. He knows when he's abusing his tires. He's been taking pretty easy and still being able to maintain that pace that nobody else seems to be able to keep up with. So Bill Elliott's car is obviously working better. Um, I think Bill Elliott is, is really in a comfortable position. Here's that battle for third once again. It is a good one as Marlon and Mike Alexander go at a tooth and nail. Alexander moving to the inside in corner number four. They come off the straightaway side by side at the line. Mike Alexander has a nose ahead of Marlon, but as uh, they go into the corner, yes, it is Mike Alexander who is able to pass Sterling Marlin, and Alexander goes to third. Those are Tennessee neighbors, Mike Alexander from Franklin, Tennessee, a suburb of Nashville, and Sterling Marlin from Columbia, Tennessee, also a suburb of Nashville. Well, Jerry punches down in the pit area, and Jerry, was it indeed a broken axle that uh, has caused Brett Bodine to go behind the wall? What's left of the axle, the rear axle in a Brett Bodine Chris Joe Ford. And I tell you, the guys up in the booth, Jerry Nelson and Ned, have you ever seen one shoot up this bad? I mean, what a break for Bud Moore and the Brett Bodine crew. They had a car running so well, and this is what put them out. Rear axle completely gone. Oh, we have a spin in turn number four on the inside of the track. Well, almost a spin, a half spin at least, as Davey Allison got sideways. He'll drive it uh, back onto the racetrack, however, and I don't think we're going to have a yellow because Davey got the car headed in the right direction and everything is okay, but a close moment. Now the yellow does come out from Harold Kinzer. Well, Dale Jarrett had just come into the pits and his pit crew said, go on back out because the yellow flag is coming out. And so he gets out just in front of Bill Elliott. So apparently he'll stay in the lead lap. And here it is again, Ned. Well, I, well, saw, I saw when Davey pulled out of it, his right rear tire was flat. I don't know if that caused it or not probably did it looked like that uh, the back end just spun around on him there's Jim Sauter right behind him David does a good job of handling the car down on the flat surface of the track he actually gets down on the grass and as that said uh, Dale was uh, in the pits when that uh, incident occurred but drove right on through knowing that the yellow was going to come out of course he didn't want to get caught in the pits and lose a lap so here come the leaders now as the caution is out and Bill Elliott is the first to come in. Jerry Punch will call this stop in Bill's pit. Well, Bill Elliott brings the Coors Four to a halt and they will go to work on the right side of the car. We would expect to see a four tire change and they will look closely at this tire coming off the Elliott car. And they were contemplating about bringing him in in about four or five laps anyway to take a look at the tire. They were concerned after watching some of the other crews on schedule stop. Left side tire now going on as Ernie Elliott climbs over and makes a major chassis adjustment. Elliott's car down and away. Great pit stop. He's the first car back on the speedway. Davey Allison is in likewise getting tire change on the Haviland Ford. Here is Mike Alexander. A number of cars. Everyone on pit road for four tires. Watching the Davey Allison uh, pit stop as they continue to work on that count. Now there he goes away. So uh, we see him getting away. So is Alan Kowicki. Dale Jarrett is still in the pits as they're changing left side rubber on his car. Uh, Davey Allison, rather, who was responsible for this caution period, our fifth of the afternoon, when he did a half spin on the inside of the racetrack in corner number four. We'll be back with more right now. As you can see, the skies have begin, uh, begun to part, and we can see some blue now. As earlier today, we had heavy overcast and overnight some heavy rain, but things are looking very, very well here as we are nearing the halfway point of this Delaware 500, and Larry Newber is in Pitt Central. This goes back to where the trouble began. Mark Martin, who has led 
and who had run second in this race to Bill Elliott for the first few laps of this race was the first one to crash at the very same time as Mark was crashing at the north end of the racetrack this was taking place at the south end of the racetrack believe it or not Kenny Schrader's crew got this car prepared repaired and they are back out onto the course now since that time the tire problems have lessened but we haven't had nearly the problems that we had in the early stages the sun has come out as you can see the King Richard Petty was the next one to be involved in one of these crashes caused by a right front tire blowing here's another angle the shot from the in-car camera Derek Cope was another victim of the tire problems as he too crashed at the fourth turn or the north turn end of the racetrack and then there was the Davy Allison situation yet to get a confirmation on what caused this particular spin we speculate a right rear tire as heavy smoke barrels out from underneath the 28 car so the tire situation perhaps is stabilized certainly it's not as severe as it was in the early stages here at Dover 500 laps as you can see we've only completed two fifths of this race 200 down a performance still under caution as 211 laps have been completed uh, there you can see Harold Kinder still displaying the yellow. Now, here's a situation from inside Dale Jarrett's car. He was coming in for a pit stop, Ned. And he had the right rear tire going down on that car, but you can see the crew moved and say, go on, go on. That was at the same time that Davey Allison was about to spin between turn three and four. So they said, go on out. They anticipated a caution, sent him back out. Fortunately for him, he did stay in the lead lap. Yes, he was able to stay on the lead lap, and he is in fourth position. But as I indicated, the yellow flag is still out on Dover Downs, so we'll take another break. Green at Dover Downs International Speedway where Bill Elliott has opened up quite a lead now. Second place is Mike Alexander in car number 12. Both the number three car of Dale Earnhardt and the 27 car of Rusty Wallace are not on the lead lap, but there is Mike trying to move to the inside of Rusty Wallace. Mike is in second position. There may have been some contact there. And in third spot is the yellow and white car number five driven by Jeff Bodine. So he moves up now to try to challenge Mike Alexander for second. Running in fourth position is Curtis Harlan, fifth is Dale Jarrett, sixth is Kyle Petty, and in seventh position is Davey Allison. And although he had that half spin down there in turn number four, he did not lose a lap and is shown in seventh spot right now. And those are the only seven cars that we're showing on the lead lap. Dale Earnhardt, Rusty Wallace, and several others have made green flag pit stops. So they are at least one lap down. In fact, Rusty Wallace should be two laps down because he's made two green flag pit stops. And we lost a lot of cars off the lead lap segment there uh, under green just before Davey's spin uh, a lot of cars had made their pit stops that were in the lead lap and then they were unfortunate enough when Davey's front the yellow came out they lost that down well Mike Alexander is just a little bit of trouble here as he has lost second now to Jeff Bodine and is about to lose third to the 44 car Sterling Marlin Marlin to the inside of uh, Mike Alexander coming out of corner number two down the back stretch but to be a challenge for that position right now as Marlin begins to drop back just a little bit as he is challenged by the number 55 car, but the 55 car of Parsons, Phil Parsons, not on the same lap as Sterling is. Phil had made a green flag pit stop uh, not too long before the caution came out. I wanted to talk about the broken axle on Brett Bodine's car that Jerry showed us a few minutes ago. We didn't get a chance to talk about it. Jerry, that is not a common thing, and this is not a rough racetrack. How do you explain what happened? But when I saw the axle on the... Uh, when the, the man was holding it on the screen there it was a hollow axle that was a gun drilled axle you know they came out with those in about 1982 or 83 and they did it to make them lighter but the Winston Cup cars had failures when they first came out with them and just about everybody that I know of had quit running the hollow axle I was really surprised to see that but more had was still trying to use it because the weight savings is so little compared to the, the the risk of it breaking. So now I've never seen a solid axle break, but I've seen plenty of the hollow ones in Winston Cup competition break. That surprised me too, Gary. I had never seen one. I had no idea that they ever ran a hollow axle in a race car. But it's gun drilled. What it is is like a, um, the size of a musket ball. I think it was 80 caliber. They rifle drill those axles to make them lighter. It works really well on the short track cars, the lighter cars, uh, dirt track cars, but these Winston Cup cars just put so much power down that they've broken those. Tremendous battle here for second place. Jeff Bodine holds on to it, but now Mike Alexander trying to move back in the second as he moves up on the inside of Jeff Bodine. This is a great battle for that second position. Bill Elliott is the leader, but then Jeff Bodine in car number five and Mike Alexander in number
number 12 are slugging it out out there. Now, you can see how, uh, as we mentioned earlier, the groove is moving up on the racetrack. Bodine and uh, Phil Parsons both way up in the high groove, especially through turns number one and two. You can see that uh, Phil uh, almost gets the right side of the tires up into the gray area. And now Mike Alexander is losing just a little bit as he drops back behind Phil Parsons. It looks like Jeff Bodine, he, he's still feeling his way around. He started off just after this caution series when it, we went to green, running right up on the edge of that gray line, right where that goes, where the rubber, you can see right into the turn where it turns kind of gray. Jeff was right on the edge of that. Now he's moved down just a few feet, and Bill Parsons is trying to get up a little higher. So these guys are still trying to find the most comfortable place to run and still run fast. Jerry has that uh, axle on the Brett Bodine car. Uh, Jerry, show it to us again, if you would, please. Well, gentlemen, you see we're talking about it's a hollow axle. I think it actually split lengthwise. It's steered off. Take a look inside. Look down the end of the rifle barrel. There's an opening in the end here. I stick my ink pen down inside. It's completely hollow. A completely hollow tube. And, of course, it is rifled on the end as an axle, and it's split lengthwise and then sheared off. A casualty for Brett Bodine. Boy, what a tough break, you know, uh, that, like we said a minute ago, that had come out several years ago. I'm very surprised Bud Moore still runs it. Well, so of course, Brett, Brett Bodine is back out on the racetrack now. They have uh, put another axle in it. He's back out there, but many laps down. He was running in second position, had a good run going. He started the race from fourth, but that uh, broken axle did put him in uh, the pit area and behind the wall for quite some time. Now here's a battle shaping up between the number 44 car of Sterling Marlin and Dale Jarrett, and this would be for fourth position. And you can see Mike Alexander in the 12 car, the gold car just ahead of him. He's running in third place, and just at the left of your screen is the yellow car of Jeff Bodine. He is running in second place. So second third a very tight battle. Indeed it is, but uh, for the moment, Bill Elliott is streaking away from everybody as he has now almost a full straightaway lead on everybody else that's uh, running behind him, Jeff Bodine in second place. Well, we've mentioned how you've got to be conservative on the engine. It doesn't make any difference how many miles, but rather the time that you put on the engine is perhaps Bill Elliott uh, putting a little bit too much uh, on that engine, at, at least at this point in the race? Well, you know, at the end of the race, if Bill Elliott's still running, we can say he drove <laughs> a very smart race. But if something happens to him, obviously we can say you didn't need that big of a lead before even the halfway point of the race. I think Bill Elliott has really become a very smart driver. He is the leader in the points, and he got that lead by being consistent. And not only just consistent, but consistently fast. So he's He's comfortable right now. I feel pretty happy with what he's doing. Yeah, I don't think he's abusing the car right now. He's working so well, just running so fast. And really, the, the lap time, he just turned to 26.15 in seconds. The other cars back there are running about 16, 20, uh, 26.25. So he's only gaining about a tenth of a second a lap. But that is about a half a second slower than he was running earlier in the race. So we're 19 laps now from the halfway point of the Delaware 500, and Bill Elliott is in the lead as a huge crowd looks on here in Delaware. And Fords have won the last five of eight events on the 1988 Winston Cup schedule. Well, is Bill Elliott uh, being conservative, or is he going for all it's worth? We ask him, are you more conscious of the point battle now that it has tightened up so much in Winston Cup competition? You know, the thing of it is we really are not that concerned with what's happening later on down the road. We just try to get race at a time. You know, we've been running good everywhere we've been so far, but yet, you know, anything can happen. This is what happened to Rusty last week at Richmond. You know, you get in a bad situation or a circumstance happen that, that catches you down, you know, and it can knock you out of the points race. But still, you know, we're going to try to run the best we can. That's all we're going to do. Bill Elliott, who is indeed the Winston Cup points leader and looking for his first Winston Cup championship. Despite his tremendous season back in 1985, he did not win the championship, but this year because of consistency. Bill Elliott is indeed in the points lead by 117 over Dale Earnhardt. Rusty Wallace is third in points, 119 laps, or rather a point behind. Terry Labonte and Ken Schrader are fourth and fifth in the points battle. Well, the points are going to get shuffled again after today, you know, with Ken Trader dropping back and Rusty Wallace hit, hit and missed. You know, he was on seven cylinders, had a couple of tire problems. 
really he needs to be consistent and hopefully hope for a top five finish at the end of the day but he's definitely had his trouble dale earnhardt kind of struggling also uh it's going to shuffle the point system that's for sure we're beginning to see a few more pit stops made now as we concentrate on the activity on the racetrack as phil elliott encircles this one mile track as uh, both rick wilson and eddie Pierschwell are in the pits meanwhile back in the pack the better battles are, of course, going on behind Bill Elliott. And there is the number five car of Jeff Bodine, the number 44 car of Sterling Marlin, and the 29 of Dale Jarrett. And the number 12 car of uh, Mike Alexander is in second. So we have second, third, fourth, and fifth right here, separated by just a little bit. And we'll try to give you an indication of how far they are behind uh, it is a pretty substantial lead, though, for Bill Elliott at the moment. About six and a half seconds, Bob, as Morgan Shepard brings the Red Baron Pete to Oldsmobile with Freddie Bacon. He's going to go for an unscheduled pit stop. He has worked his way for a while back, back into the lead lap, and then made another green flag uh, pit stop and got a lap down again, and here he is having a tire problem again. He's changing the right side tires on his car, so that'll put him at least one more. Buddy Baker has already announced that his driver for 1989 full-time will be Greg Sachs with Buddy driving an occasional race if he feels like it. You can see when they've changed the right side tires on that car of Morgan Shepard that the tires they put on had stickers on them. They were brand new tires. Now, when you're having tire problems, blister problems at a racetrack, you look for scuff tires. The tires that have been scuffed have cured just a little bit and they'll be just a little bit harder. So I, I would think that all of the crews are running up and down pit road trying to find some tires that have been scuffed, and hopefully that will help solve the tire problem. I think most of them have only scuffed perhaps five or six sets of tires, and not anticipating the tire problems that they had early in the race here today, and so I'm sure that many of them are down to what you call stickers, brand new tires that have not been run. Again, we're watching third, fourth, and fifth here. Mike Alexander is in second, but now third is Jeff Bodine in the number five, then Sterling Marlin in 44, and Dale Jarrett in number 29. Saw some smoke from the Jarrett car. I think it was only tire smoke. I think it was tire smoke. It was coming from the car. We'll keep an eye on it, but it seems like those four drivers are pretty well content with the positions that they're running in. They, they are not making any attempt to pass each other now. They're just uh, riding along, just trying to Keep a good pace going there and not abuse those tires. But you know this racetrack, it, it definitely does not reward somebody who tries hard. The harder you try it at Dover, the more problems you seem to have. Here comes Ricky Rudd into the pit. Rudd, last year's winner. In fact, the guy who has won the last two Delaware 500s is in, and Dick Bergman is right there. Well, Bob Jenkins, we've seen a lot of people come into pit road, and I'm going to tell you what, this deal is separating the brave from the abnormally brave. A number of crew chiefs have said their drivers have just come in and changed tires when there's nothing wrong, but a bunch of guys have changed tires when there are things that are drastically wrong with them. And one of the things we need to bear in mind is that these cars have power steering. That makes it very difficult to feel a tire going down, may even make it difficult to feel a tire that is beginning to blister. The result? Ultra tension on pit road. The crews are very, very worried about the safety security of their drivers and their cars as well. And certainly Ricky Rudd has experienced probably the most tire problems of the entire afternoon. Now there is Dale Jarrett in car number 29 battling with Sterling Marlin in car number 44. Just a few moments ago, these positions shuffled, and this is how it happened. Sterling Marlin went on the inside of Jeff Bodine. Jeff Bodine driving the car number five. You see how close these three cars are running, and Dale Jarrett took advantage of the fact that Marlin had uh, Bodine a little bit high in the turn, so Jarrett moved on the inside and took over the fourth position. So Sterling Marlin is in third position now, and the number 29 of Jarrett is in fourth, and that drops Jack Bo Jeff Bodine back to fifth. Now we can see Dale Jarrett here move to third position, side by side with Sterling. Uh, he has to get out of the accelerator and move high on the track because Bobby Hillen Jr. is right there, but he stays side by side with Sterling Marlin as they come down the straightaway. Marlin holds him off, though, but a good battle. Well, Jarrett is you know, taking that inside route, which is uh, a little more abusive to the tires, but Sterling using the outside Ooh. groove, and they bump just a little bit, and Sterling has to back off, and I don't blame him a bit in the world, and Jarrett <laughs> takes the position. Well, that was quite a move there, but you know, it looked like Dale had just kind of sat back. He had that flight tire just before the caution, just slowly moving up back up towards the, the front. Now he's setting his sights on Mike Alexander for second. But I do think how the 
second fastest car in the field to Bill Elliott as Harry Gant comes into the pit for a green flag pit stop. And uh, that right rear tire going flat just as he came into pits and the car came out at the same time. Had to get him concerned a little bit. They're getting the halfway mark, so this is an official race, regardless of what happens, although we haven't had any immediate threat of rain here recently. But uh, Garrett now beginning to feel comfortable again, I guess, starting to move. I don't think we're going to have an interruption by rain. This thing is going to go the whole way, I think, and we are exactly halfway through the Delaware 500. Bill Elliott leads out. have reached the halfway mark. In fact, we are three laps over the halfway point, and our Napa mid-race recap now will show you what has occurred here in the first part of this event. The leader at the halfway point was Bill Elliott. He started third, has led 201 of the 250 laps. The average speed of the race, 113.475. Bill has made five pit stops on laps 36, 75, 112, 148, and 209. Five caution periods for a total of 37 laps. We have had five different leaders and nine lead changes. 35 of the 40 cars are still remaining, and seven are on the lead lap. Those cars that have dropped out of the race include Rodney Combs, our pole sitter Mark Martin, Richard Petty, Randy LaJoy, and Derek Cope because of an accident. Now we'll recap for you the video highlights of the first half of this race. It got off to a very precarious start as the pole sitter Mark Martin running second to Bill Elliott visits the wall in turn number three, a hard hit because of a tire problem. And at the other end of the racetrack, it was an also a similar problem for Ken Schrader as he got into the wall and made heavy contact with the right side of the car. Tires were a definite story in the early part of this race. It settled down for a little bit, but then it was Richard Petty who also had a problem with the car as he went into corner number one, drifting high on the racetrack and just brushing the wall. Richard Petty in car number 43, however, remains in this race. Another incident of wall contact involved Derry Cope as he lost control and hit the fourth turn wall, and we saw it from our in-car camera. Davey Allison had a near miss. The car got sideways with him coming down off of turn number three. He got the car corrected, however, and continued into the pit area. He did not lose a lap because of that and is still one of those cars in the lead lap. Bill Elliott is the leader, however. Sterling Marlin has been in for a pit stop. Jerry, why was the reason for the stop? Well, take a look, Bob. Sterling was in. This is the right front tire off the team on Airlines under Oldsmobile. He came in for an unscheduled stop after running only about 50 laps from the previous stop. Mike Alexander, likewise, just in a minute ago, his right front tire on the Miller Buick looks the same. So the second and fourth place cars have both been in just a minute ago. Unscheduled pit stop for why? Well, Blistered tires, big holes, chunks of rubber coming out of the tires. So certainly the tire situation has not been resolved by any means, and that is one of the stories that is a real factor in the first part of this race. We'll be back in just a moment. Just as you rejoin us, the yellow flag comes out for the sixth time this afternoon, and it's because of the number 96 car driven by Dana Patton of Enfield, New Hampshire. And there is the race back to the caution flag, and Bill Elliott, of course, will maintain the lead. But Dana Patton has definitely come in contact with something. He ran in the back of the A car. Bobby Hillen had some kind of a problem, slowed down uh, all of a sudden, and, uh, and uh, Dana ran right into the back of it. So they raise the hood on the number 96 car and see if they can uh, straighten that car out and get it back into the race. Dana Patton and the U.S. Chrome Corporation Buick started this event in 38th position. He might have an engine problem there, too, or maybe a broken oil line or something of that nature. And this will be a break for those who had not made green flag pit stops, including Bill Elliott, Dale Jarrett, Jeff Bodine, and Davey Allison. And some of those drivers had come in while Sterling Marlin Mike Alexander had been in pit. Let's go to Jerry Punchman. Well, again, the race on pit road. Bill Elliott brings the cores. Motorcraft four to a halt. The crew go to work. Dan Elliott, Ernie Elliott, the crew down to the right side of the car. They have the car on the right side jack. They already had the right side jack down. What great pit work by the crew crew here. They had the left side tires going on. What's happening in Dale Jarrett's pit, Dick? Well, you guys are ahead of us. They're just getting ready to do the left side tires on Dale Jarrett's car all the way through this pit stop. You have been ahead. I imagine he will. Elliott's on his way out. He's got Jarrett beat by a mile. Dale doesn't even have the left side tires on. Now he's got him down, and Dale's gone. Alan Kowicki remains in the pits, as does Davy Allison. Now Alan begins to move away as we watch Mike Alexander go also back on the track. There you can see all of the 
scurrying that's going on in the pit area. Davey Allison's car is still being worked on. There you can see that the Shitko car of uh, the number 21 of Kyle Petty going out. And there now is Davey Allison finally getting out of pit road. Michael Waltrip is still in. Now he begins to move away, as does Lake Speed. So the pit stops are being completed once again as we are under the caution flag because of the Dana Patton incident down the back stretch when he had contact with the Bobby Hillen Jr. car. 265 laps have been completed. We've been televising races from here at Dover for quite a while, and uh, it certainly was an interesting race here just last year, 1987. Here is our Purolator replay. Purolator. Last year in the Delaware 500, Dale Earnhardt was driving to his first win on the Monster Mile but it wasn't to be. This would be the first race of the season that Dale would not finish because of mechanical problems. He did, however, go on to win the Winston Cup Championship. Ricky Rudd went on to win his second straight Delaware 500 and goes today for an unprecedented third. He has definitely had some problems, though, in that quest for the third victory as he has been, been in numerous times because of tire problems. We'll be back with more televised the Delaware 500 Winston Cup race for you later tonight here on ESPN. We'll discuss uh, the junior is in the pit area. And let's go to Larry Newber in Pitt Central who has been assessing and trying to uh, find out what's going on with the tire situation. Oh, Bob, during the last pit stop, I took the opportunity to go out on pit road and see what was going on, and uh, I saw, first of all, Dale Earnhardt's crew uh, get him out in front of Bill Elliott once again for an another time. But we were also talking uh, with Richard Childress about the tire situation. And on the situation, he is saying that the problem is with the shoulders on the tires. They're getting good tire temperature right off the center of the tread, but on the shoulders, the, the right side and the left side, is temperature everything about as high as 260 degrees. You're watching, by the way, on the racetrack right now, Daryl Waltrip, who is out on the racetrack, uh, driving in a very unusual configuration. But getting back to the tire situation, the wear is doing much better now. All the drivers are sensitive to what's going on, and as Richard agreed with me, the track is treating the tires a little better. You're still getting those big 250, 260 degree temperature readings on the shoulders of the tires. And by the way, down here in the uh, Children's Pit, it's almost like a tire shore. Believe it or not, there are about 60, yes, 60 tires stacked down here. I've seen tires with numbers three on them and tires with number 48, as well as uh, a couple of other teams. And there you can see the work on the Daryl Waltrip situation. He was, uh, he drove at least two laps, I think, around the track with his hood up and completely blocking his view. What could have caused that, gentlemen? They, they're working somewhere else. There a couple guys working on the hood there, but some, one of the men was working on some of the chassis, part of the chassis. He, they apparently had the hood up working on it and just sent Daryl out of the pit without any hood pins in. All right, so the green comes back out now and racing resumes on lap number 270. And Dale Earnhardt and Sterling Marlin are just ahead of Bill Elliott. They're on the tail end of the lead lap. Now Elliott trying to move on the inside of Sterling Marlin. Of well, they have been uh, among his strongest challengers this afternoon, both Earnhardt and especially Sterling Marlin, and Bill would like very much to pass Sterling Marlin here and indeed put him a complete lap down on the field, and he has. So Elliott now drops Sterling Marlin back one uh, full lap. A little wobble there on the part of Sterling Marlin. He gathers, he gathers it in, though, but as you can see, is continuing to lose position. Yeah, his car is, uh, apparently the car is not feeling too well for him here as the green flag came back out. Dale Jarrett's in second place. He got caught back in traffic. And in third place is Jeff Bodine. He's not too far behind Jarrett. Fourth unofficially is uh, Kyle Petty in car number 21, and Davey Allison is in fifth position. Well, so some the uh, Positions really changed there because of that caution because some have already come in and therefore lost a lap. Yeah, there are only six cars on the lead lap right now. Dale Earnhardt is running at the tail end of the lead lap. There are five, four cars behind Bill Elliott, and then Dale Earnhardt right in front of him. Boy, heavy traffic right there. You can imagine Dale Earnhardt's crew knowing that they're in the lead lap that's going to have a tough time holding that, that edge on Bill Elliott unless something happens and a yellow comes out. You know they're looking at that heavy scoop of traffic and saying, any spin or anything like this that could happen right in this back would cause Dale Earnhardt to beat Bill Elliott to the line and regain his position back in the lead lap. 
two and three of breast racing uh, going on here, and the pack seems to be holding to Bill Elliott as he is not uh, putting much separation between himself and everybody else. There comes the group, and they really have not seen the rear end of Elliott's car for a long, long time, but now they can. Yeah, he's been so far out in front most of the time. He had about a seven and a half second lead before this caution came out, and it was a welcome call. So you know these cars can go somewhere around 90 to maybe 100 laps before they need to stop to get fuel. But every car can come in uh, somewhere around the 50 lap area. So Bill Elliott really hasn't been able to lap anybody that's running he's just a little bit slower on the racetrack. The only chance they get to see him is during the caution. Let's go down to Jerry Punch and see what's wrong with Darrell Walters. Well, Darrell Walters came in the hood down and get him out that loose the lap and they put the hood down and they turned to put the hood pins in Daryl took off so Daryl went back on the racetrack the hood blew up and it cracked the windshield they came in they beat the hood back down but the problem is well you see a brand new windshield here about ready to go in the tide car NASCAR said you got to bring him in that windshield is cracked too badly it'll be dangerous if it comes in Daryl's lap Daryl also taking his way back to Kent Road for a brand new windshield for the three-time Winston Cup champion. Indeed, Jerry, the black flag has been given to uh, Darrell Waltrip, and he will be coming in now for that new windshield. So Waltrip will maybe be making a pit stop. As a matter of fact, here he comes down pit road right now as the leader is Bill Elliott. And let's go back down to Jerry, who can uh, call this replacement of the windshield. That windshield is really busted up, isn't it, Larry? Yeah, Jerry. Yeah. It is really crunched in there, and Daryl can barely see out of it. What a break. I mean, that's, it's a wonder it didn't come in. They use this shatterproof glass, another safety feature here in NASCAR. That's what kept the windshield from coming in on Daryl's lap. And now Jeff Hammond, the crew, they're going to work on the car. Sandy Jones there on the left side. Jeff Hammond's on the right side of your picture. And they are trying to get the windshield unbuckled. They will pull the brakes and truck away. Now the left of that one slides out. The new windshield will go back in. And Daryl sitting very patiently car but losing a lot of valuable time here at Dover. Well you can see the braces, those three little braces in the middle of the car, they're bent back. That's what holds the windshield up. This new windshield will break again if they don't fix those braces. They're going to have more problems. They're, they're having a tough day all the way around. You can imagine they were trying to change the front spring to help the handling and then all these problems started. It just seems to compound and compound here at Dover. The harder you try, the more trouble you seem to have. Darrell Waltrip's uh, season has not been a especially good one for him. Uh, he tells us that uh, he's very much looking forward, however, to next year. Waltrip is eighth in the point standings, and here now is the battle for second position. Dale Jarrett in car number 29 and Jeff Bodine in car number 5. And Darrell Waltrip has made his way back out onto the racetrack. There he goes as the uh, second-place cars of uh, Jarrett and uh, Jeff Bodine pass him on the high side of the racetrack and there is the leader meanwhile bill elliott and uh, dale earnhardt is still on the lead lap but uh, almost a full lap behind well there again elliott is not trying to punish his car too much to pass dale earnhardt and put him a lap down he would like to do it because he knows anytime earnhardt's in the lead lap that he's a threat to win the race but he also knows that his car is faster than earnhardt or has been all day at least, and uh, he wouldn't be quite as concerned he'd rather not punish his car right now Rather than punish it to get around him, he'll just sit there and ride behind him, and maybe Dale's tires will start to go away in a little bit, and he can make an easier pass. So Elliott now with the lead. Dale Jarrett second, Jeff Bodine third, Davey Allison fourth, and Kyle Petty fifth at the end of two, 287 laps now completed. It is still Bill Elliott showing the way in the Delaware 500. Dale Earnhardt is right ahead of him, but Dale is uh, almost a lap down to the field. Running in second place is Dale Jarrett. Third is car number five, Jeff Bodine. Kyle Petty is running fourth, Davey Allison fifth, and Dale Earnhardt sixth. Those are the six cars that are in the lead lap. One lap down is the car number 12 of Mike Alexander. He's running seventh. Charlie Marlin is eighth. Phil Parsons ninth. Alan Kowick is tenth. Benny Parsons eleventh. And Neil Bonnett is in fourth place. They're all running. Jerry just made a pit stop for a change of right side tires, and it looks like they might be bringing him back in again.
Zwicky is the car right behind Bill Elliott, but uh, Allen is also off the pace and not on the lead lap after starting this race in second spot. Actually, he's one lap down, so he has moved around Mike Alexander, so he would be the driver running in seventh position at the moment. You know, Alan Kowicki really would like to get his hat back just the same as Dale Earnhardt. It almost appears that Bill Elliott has really kind of settled back for a while. The number five car and the 28 car are battling for position here. Jeff Bodine and uh, Bob, or rather, Davey Allison looking for the third spot. As Bodine tries to save off the challenge of Allison, the number 83 car of Lake Speed is right ahead of Jeff Bodine. You can see the high groove that Jeff is continuing to run. We've been seeing that for uh, almost the entire race. Well, you're right, Bob. Jeff, he still feels his way around. He, now he's really running higher than ever. He's actually getting his right side tires up into the gray part of the racetrack and making a, making a, his own groove up there. He seems to be more and more successful up there, so he's up to third position. Maybe that's been working pretty well for him. Ford against Chevy here. Ford and Davey Allison in the Chevrolet of Jeff Bodine. A lot of speculation as to what Jeff Bodine may be doing in the 1989 season. Now, Davey Allison is alongside him down the straightaway. Bodine still, though, with about a half a car length advantage on him. And Allison is having all kinds of trouble taking that spot away from Jeff Bodine. Now he pulls ahead by almost a full car length, and there he has him. Davey Allison moves to third spot. That was a good move on Davey's part. Jeff was trying so hard, you can tell he had to almost get out of the gas coming off the turn. Alan Kowicki just passed Bill Elliott, and so now Alan Kowicki is on the lead lap. I agree with you, Gary. I think Bill Elliott is sort of cooling it right now. I don't think he's running that car as hard as it could possibly go. And the fact that he's got two drivers like Dale Earnhardt and Alan Kowicki up there who have uh, gotten their laps back, they have to run hard. They have no choice but to run hard at this point and try to get their lap back, which they have done at this point. And uh, Elliott would have to run just as hard and abuse his car as much as they're abusing theirs to stay up there. And he just doesn't want to do that with some uh, 205 laps to go. You know, it's decision time all through the race, especially for the leader like Bill Elliott in that kind of position. has won five times this year in Winston Cup competition at Bristol, at Dover, at Pocono, at Daytona, and at Darlington. So his wins this year are certainly not confined to the super speedways as they were basically in 1985. He has won on the half mile at uh, Bristol. He has won here on the one mile track at uh, Dover Down. And we have a crash up in turn number three. Ken Schrader is here. I can't, yes it is, for the second time Boy. this afternoon, Ken Schrader is into the wall, and he takes even more off the right side of that car. You can see him uh, unbuckling the uh, safety netting on the left side of the car, and is unstrapping now and climbing out, and I would guess that Schrader would probably say, okay, you win, I quit. <laughs> Ken Schrader's going to walk into the pits, and he's going to tell Harry Hyde, look, if we go back out there again, I may not have anything left but a motorcycle. <laughs> he has really narrowed the front end of that car down, but this is the break that Alan Kowicki and Dale Earnhardt were looking for. It has put them back in contention. We'll have seven cars on the lead lap. Everybody will be coming into the pits as we see Kenny Schrader walk back through the pits. Bill Elliott drives down pit road. And so you can see how you can get a lap back rather easily here at Dover as both Earnhardt and Alan Kowicki will do so now during this uh, series of pit stops. And Bill Elliott pit Jerry Bunch. Well, they've already, they've already put right side tires on Bill Elliott's course, Motorcraft Ford. Elliott's on top, Dale Jarrett on the bottom. We'll watch these two gladiators battle it out on pit road. And now they're going to the left side. Oh! And Dale Jarrett is down, now coming down pit road. So Almost hit Alan Kowicki. Bill Elliott's down and away. Dale Jarrett will not get out in front of Elliott. It'll be Elliott and Jarrett the first two off pit road. That was a close call, though, from there for Dale, though, as he almost flipped the Alan Kowicki car that was stopping in front of him. There was two tires on Dale Jarrett's car, four tires on Bill Elliott's car. I think if he hadn't had that collision with Alan Kowicki, he may have been able to take the lead yep. and beat Bill Elliott out of the pit. I agree. But that's the way they line up on the racetrack. And there you can see the work continues on Alan Kowicki's car on the left side. Now the jacks are down, and Kowicki moves back out on to the racetrack. And all of this is happening at lap 297, so we're almost three-fifths of the way through this event here this afternoon. And we'll take another break and be right back with more live coverage. A bit of a break before we go back to racing. 
Well, here's Bill Elliott about to go out of the pit. He tries to get out in a hurry, and just in front of him there, we see Rusty Wallace pulling out of his pits, and he is still hustling, even though he's a couple laps down. But he wanted to start in front of Bill Elliott, try to do what Earnhardt did up there a moment ago, and get one of his laps down. Rusty has made a couple of green flag pit stops that put him those two laps down. Well, everything is just very critical as far as Winston Cup points are concerned. Now, here is the pit stop summary. It shows that Elliott came in first and went out first. Dale Jarrett held his position. Jeff Bodine lost a spot. Davey Allison gained a spot. And Kyle Petty also retained his fifth-place ranking. We are past now the 300 lap mark, as we will be going green in just a few moments. We'll be back after this with more of the Delaware 500. Green flag has just come out, and we are back to racing. That is Rusty Wallace leading Bill Elliott down the back stretch. Uh, Bill is the leader of the race, and Rusty trying to get the lap back again. And as we mentioned, Rusty just doing everything he can to gain one more Winston Cup point, because it could be very important at the end of the season. But well, we saw Dale Earnhardt get his lap back just on that last caution. Now Dale's back in the pack trying to move on up and be a contender for the uh, win later on. Rusty Wallace seeing that knows he's losing points to both Bill uh, Elliott and Dale Earnhardt. He's trying as hard as he can right now to get back in contention. There's the 88 car of Morgan Shepard and the 11 car of Terry Labonte close together out there on the racetrack. And Jeff Bodine has just moved around Dale Jarrett. He moved around Davey Allison a couple of laps ago. Jarrett only took on left side, right side tires, and I believe that was a mistake on his crew. I believe they should have put on four tires because the car is not going through the corners like it was earlier. No, indeed, as Davey Allison here comes on the inside, and we are hearing that there is tire rub on the right side. You can see it very evident, uh, Ned. Evidently, he touched Alan Kowicki when he started out of the pits there earlier uh, during the caution flag pit stop. They should have come back in and checked that, but now it's going to cost them because they're probably going to have to make a green flag pit stop. Well, that's an unfortunate situation because Dale is certainly doing his job keeping that car well in the top five and in second place for a while but now he may be dropping back just a little bit because of this problem at the right front of the race car the in car camera though rides with dale jarrett but there you can see davy allison on the right the uh, extreme left side that's the number three car i should say of dale earnhardt yeah, Dale Earnhardt moving up fast. He, uh, he knows now he's got a little spark of insurgence. Back in the lead lap, ready to go. Tough break for Dale Jarrett to bump uh, Alan Kowicki as he was trying to leave the pits and have that tire rub. I don't know how much longer that's going to last. There goes Ricky Rudd to the inside of Dale Jarrett. And here comes uh, Bill Parsons next. And that is seems to me like developing into a rather serious situation here. Yes, it is. It's, uh, it's a big risk that he's taking staying out there, especially with the right front rubbing because it don't take long there's not much rubber on the side of those tires and if it's rubbing it can rub through in a hurry well you just want to stay out there though as long as you can knowing that the car is is uh, handling so well and you just hope for a caution but boy dale it seems is taking a real chance because that tire could go at any moment and put him into the wall so the risk is is it rubbing on the uh the tread of the tire, the shoulder of the tire, or actually on the sidewall where there is very little rubber. If it's rubbing on the sidewall, it can't last over just a few laps. If it's rubbing on the top or the tread of the tire, or the surface of the tire, it could last a little bit longer and maybe to the next caution. There goes Kyle Petty in car number 21 to the inside of Jarrett. Well, you know, the crew chief on uh, the Dale Jarrett car has to be thinking right now, what do we do? If we stop, we know we're going to lose at least a lap fixing it. We're already half a lap down to the leader. What can we do? We keep losing positions. Uh, eventually, either we're going to hit the wall or it's going to get better. We don't know where it's rubbing on the tire. It may or may not fail. There's so many decisions going on right now. That's probably more why Dale Jarrett's falling back in the pack because they're trying to decide what to do. And while they're trying to decide, he doesn't want to be right on the ragged edge just in case they will blow out. And there it might be, but they don't realize that the tire is rubbing. It might be that they're thinking that he's dropping back because he didn't take on left side tires. Well, I don't know, um, Ned. You know, they're pitted right across from our booth here, and I can see the NASCAR official talking to the crew chief on Dale Jarrett's car. So I think that NASCAR has warned, has at least indicated that they have a problem. Well, let's go to Dick Bergman, who maybe can fill us in on all these questions. Dick? Well, they're sort of trying to figure out down here what the problem is. NASCAR has just told Elmo Langley, the crew chief, bring the car in. Elmo has signaled to the team, yep, let's bring him in. It was a surprisingly hard hit here in the pit. What had happened was Kowicki tried to get into his pit while Jarrett was trying to get out of his. It was a right front contact. The thing to worry me is you can see smoke not only outside the right 
right side of the car, but you can see some of it underneath, and that may not be an indication of a tire. It may mean something else. But they are ready to change tires. I hope that's all it is. But I really would hope that they would just pull the fender away from the tire and send them out maybe a three or four second pit stop. That's all they can hope for right now. If they have to change tires, they're going to lose that lap and, and really have a tough time getting it back. Well, let's see exactly what they do. We're inside the uh, Dale Jarrett car as he stops at his pit to uh, try to get an assertion of what's going on. Dick Bergren, tell us what's going on. Well, Bob, what's going on is the right front fender is bent far enough in. It could have actually not just got the outside of the tire, but even the center of the tire. Oh, they've come off the jack. Bad break for Jarrett. He has come off the jack. That's going to take them still more time here in the pit. The right front fender is pretty well far enough. Jarrett says this. So far, he hasn't gone down a lap. If they don't get him out of here soon, he will. Yeah, he's gone down oh, a lap boy, already. Oh, right up now. He's down. He's down. Tough break for Dale Jarrett. Yeah, he went down one lap, and now he's going to have to hustle to stay as Bill Elliott comes off a of turn four down the front straightaway. He's almost two laps down. Jared gets back out on the track. He's just about a second and a half ahead of Bill Elliott. The jack man left his position to assist the uh, situation on the right front, and the jack fell before they got the front tire off. So that's what took up uh, valuable time in the pit for Dale Jarrett. Boy, what a series of events that happened. You know, they, they changed two tires to hopefully get the lead, and then... Uh, the reason they, the fact that they changed two tires caused them to have that collision with a car that was just coming in, not expecting them to be going out. Then the tire rubbing, NASCAR made the decision for them and black flagged them, causing them to have a pit. Then the problems they had on the pit stop. And so Dale Jarrett has not had a good afternoon here in the last few laps. A very disappointing situation for Dale. There you can see the damage in the right front of the race car. I think they have successfully pulled it away from the tire, but you can also see that he is almost two laps down as right there is Bill Elliott in the number nine car. And right on his back bumper is Morgan Shepard, who's trying to get one of the laps back that he had lost on a green flag pit stop. Rusty Wallace is still just ahead of Bill Elliott, so he is, uh, back, has gotten back one of the laps that he was back down. At 300 lap mark, uh, Bob, Bill Elliott, of course, was leading. Dale Jarrett was second at the time. Of course, that is Davey, Davey Allison has moved up to second. He was third, fourth, Jeff Bodine, fifth, Kyle Petty, Dale Earnhardt, sixth, and Alan Kowicki, seventh. Those, those seven cars were in the lead lap. One lap down in eighth place was Phil Parsons, Mike Alexander, in tenth place, Sterling Marlin. In eleventh, the car number 75 was Neil Bonnet. In twelfth place, two laps down, Rusty Wallace, thirteenth, Terry Labonte, who was two laps down, Morgan Shepard, who's trying to get one of those laps back, was fourteenth, Dave Marcus, fifteenth, sixteenth, Michael Waltrip, 17th, Ricky Rudd, 18th, Lake Speed, 19th, Denny Parsons, and in 20th place, the car number two of Ernie Irvin. So there you have the rundown as uh, far as we can go with seven cars on the lead lap, and that was at the end of 300 laps, and we are now on 318, and the only significant change there has been the development with the Dale Jarrett car. The number three car... The number seven car race close together out there, as does the 12 car of Mike Alexander. And Earnhardt is indeed not out of the woods by any means in winning this race. Well, he's had a, a long day so far, and there's a long way to go still. But Dale Earnhardt and both Alan Kowicki that you see running together there just got back in the lead lap. They're working there. When you when you unlap yourself like that, you really, and when the yellow comes out, you have to go an extra lap to catch up to the pace car. So when the race restarted, Alan Kowicki and Dale Earnhardt were both just about dead last in the traffic. They've been passing car after car. Now they're really getting the leader within sight. So they 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 stayed together through the traffic and now they're moving on up into, into really into contention there's the number five car of Bodine it's right ahead of uh, Dale Earnhardt and Bodine would be in third Earnhardt in fourth and Kowicki in fifth at this point and here comes Dale to challenge uh, Jeff Bodine they pass Ricky Rudd Bodine going to the high side and Dale Earnhardt to the inside of Rudd now we'll see if Dale can close in on the third place car of Jeff Bodine. They come off the corner. And Earnhardt uh, backed off just a little bit. Yeah, I, the car looks so much better. Uh, Dale, Dale Earnhardt's car looks so much better than it did early in the race. I'm sure they've been adjusting on every pit stop, and they're getting it closer and closer. And I think a little more of the same, and Dale Earnhardt's going to be right up in there with Elliott. 
We're seeing Ricky Rudd there, who has won the last two Delaware 500s, but will probably not win it today. And you know, it seems that wins of the Delaware 500 has come in pairs. Rudd did it in 86 and 87. Gant won it in 84 and 85. Petty in 74 and 75. Pearson in 71 and 72. And Petty again in 69 and 70. Back to the leader, meanwhile, it's Bill Elliott, and Jerry Punch has a story from Pitt Road. Well, gentlemen, maybe Gary can comment on some of the strategy being used out here. In fact, the reason we have not seen any more tire problems from Bill Elliott is that Bill Elliott has got a teammate. Brad Peek is driving the Buddy Arrington Ford, discussing the tires of Bill Elliott. Bill Elliott is giving Brad Peek new tires. Brad Peek is running a few laps, bringing them back up here to Bill Elliott, and Bill Elliott is putting on scuff tires. And Gary, maybe that's a strategy that some of the other teams should employ, having someone else scuff tires for them. Well, you know, we talked about, uh, we saw somebody putting on thicker tires under a green flag pit stop. I believe it was Morgan Shepard. And we, we were talking about how a scuff tire has a lot less chance of blistering. So that is a great move on, on uh, Ernie from Bill, Bill Elliott's pit, Ernie Elliott, or whoever it was in charge of that, to fence the tires down, had them scuffed, brought them back, put them on Bill's car. That's a good move. And I think a lot of the other teams are looking around for partners. Well, we have seen scruffing of tires happen uh, occasionally on the Winston Cup Tour this year. You remember at Watkins Glen, we had a tire problem throughout that race. And we had some teams... Oh, we have a crash. We have a crash in turn number two. It's Alan Kowicki, who's in the wall. And it uh, is, uh, once again, uh, possible that uh, a tire went down on that car. He is continuing to roll down the backstretch. You can see fluid leaking out of that car. And tremendous damage on the left side of the Xerox Ford. That's on the right side, right front of it, is what hit the wall, Bob. And yes, there is right. a lot of damage. Now the car does come to a stop. Well, that's a hard hit. Very familiar looking so far today with Mark Martin starting it off. Now Alan Kowicki's accident, although it was in turn one and two, looked just the same. Let's uh, take a look at it on our replay as we watch uh, what happens at the top of the screen. As he comes into the picture, you can see he's coming off of it. It looked like he turned crossways. Oh, well, no, he had already hit the wall at that point and then came back down on the racetrack and went back up into the wall again. He is driving the car right there. Yeah, he's he almost steering hit the wall it, so mm -hmm. you, you, can, you know he hit the wall very hard, but he still has a presence of mind to get it out of the traffic. And here it is once again. Contact has already been made with the wall. The car continuing to slide up the banking, and Allen scraping along the wall from turn number two all the way down to the halfway point of the backstretch where the car sits right now. Bill Elliott returns to the race after having made a pit stop. Most of the others in uh, the top uh, seven, the cars on the lead lap, are also in for some pit stops. And there is Dale Jarrett, the work continuing on that car as they change rubber on the right side of the car. Somewhat of a break for him, uh, Bob. He came out in front of Bill Elliott, had moved away from Elliott a little bit, and uh, so now he's only one lap down, and Morgan Shepard and Rusty Wallace was out in front of Bill Elliott when this caution came out, so they got one of their laps back as well. Let's go down to Dick Berger quickly. Well, then it does, in fact, appear that the only problem with Dale Jarrett's car came from the right front tire, which was produced by the fender sticking into it, because after they changed it, we've seen no more smoke. When they took the tire off, it was badly damaged. It's a tough break because he did lose those laps, but at least he proved he can definitely run in the front in this league. He can run in the front here at Dover. He can run in the front at anywhere. Well, you're right. Despite the fact of where he's finishing today, it will be a very good day for Dale Jarrett. We'll watch some action as the cars came out of the pit area from uh, that most recent time. Davy Allison and Jeff Bodine. And this yeah. occurred after they had come out of the pits. I was watching this as the cars uh, actually left their pit down pit road, and there was a little bit of contact between the two cars on pit road. And then when they got out on the track, they had some more contact. So we're under caution once again at Dover Downs International Speedway for the eighth time this afternoon on lap 329. 69 laps to go in the Delaware 500. Bill Elliott is the leader, Dale Earnhardt second, Jeff Bodine third, Davey Allison fourth, and Kyle Petty is in fifth. For those of you just joining us, we'll recap what has happened. Early in the race, tires became a problem. The pole sitter, Mark Martin, hard into the wall in corner number two, or three, as he tried to catch the leader at that time, Bill Elliott. 
At the same time, at the other end of the racetrack, it was Ken Schrader that had a similar problem. He, too, was hard into the concrete wall, and they did get that car back out onto the racetrack for a few laps, but it crashed again, and Ken Schrader retired from competition. Then it was Richard Petty's turn to have a tire problem. The tire letting go and the car scraping against the second turn wall. Richard Petty was able to get back into the race after this little incident. Derek Cope had hard contact with the fourth turn wall, as we saw from the in-car camera. Davey Allison almost with a serious problem, although he did a half spin and was able to gather it in. This did cause a caution, and it allowed Davey to stay on the lead lap. And just a few minutes ago, Alan Kowicki, again, hard into the second turn wall, doing heavy damage to the right side of that race car. On pit road, as they came out, there was contact between Jeff Bodine in car number five and Davey Allison in car number 28 contact in the pit area and then when they got back out onto the racetrack there was additional contact as you'll see here in just a moment Davey caught up and gave Jeff a little bit of a nudge knowing telling him that uh, he really didn't appreciate what had happened Dale Jarrett has certainly had one of the best drives of his Winston Cup career running second for a time but having a tire problem and falling off of the lead lap We'll be back with more of the Delaware 500 right after these messages. There are the top five. Afternoon on ESPN from Dover Downs International Speedway in Delaware. Next weekend, we begin some uh, trip, and uh, believe it or not, Bill Elliott has never won a race at Martinsville. Dale Earnhardt and Rusty Wallace both have won at that location. It's the first time we've been at Martinsville for several years. We did a race there, uh, I think, back in 1981, maybe, but... We'll return there for the Goodies 500 next Sunday afternoon, live at 12.30 Eastern Time, and we hope that you will be with us. And boy, that is always a lot of good close to talk about contact. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see if this is a contact sport when we get to Martinsville next week. Yeah, I guess uh, you can hardly tell one car from the other. Everybody that starts out with a red car or a blue car uh, certainly doesn't have uh, all the colors when that uh, race is over at Martinsville. There's a look at Rick Wilson as he gets set to uh, stand on the throttle and get back into the race competition. Looked like he was just looking over to the driver beside him and sort of grinned and said, I'm going to get you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the field coming off with corner number four. Now you can see Rick getting ready to shift gears and stand on the accelerator. The green flag is displayed, and we are back to racing. And Bill Elliott has the lead is in second position with Jeff Bodine third, Davey Allison fourth, and the 21 car of Kyle Petty running in fifth position. The number 44 car of Sterling Marlin, you can see there ahead of Dale Jarrett, separating first from second. He is not on the lead lap. But Dale Earnhardt will try to pass him here and have clear sailing between himself and the leader, Bill Elliott. You know, we saw Davey and Allison and Jeff Bodine pull out of the pits together, and they were really racing for position, but then Davey seemed to have fallen back just a little on the restart. There's Jeff Bodine right behind Dale Earnhardt. Davey should, have, should be right in the middle of this race with uh, Dale Earnhardt and Shirley Marlin and Jeff Bodine, but he seems to have fallen back a little. He it, may have hurt his alignment a little bit when he bumped Jeff Bodine under the caution. It appeared to us as if Bodine might have suffered the most serious damage because there is a huge tire mark on the right side of Bodine's car, but instead it looks like Davey Allison may have suffered the greatest damage in that little incident with Jeff Bodine as Jeff tried to pull alongside uh, Sterling Marlin there, unable to do so. Now here comes Jeff back on the low side of the racetrack. Well, the, I've the, noticed uh, after each restart that Jeff Bodine's car has been strong for six, eight, or ten laps, and then it starts to go high, as we saw it earlier, because I'm sure that they've been making adjustments on that car during each caution period pit stop, so maybe he won't have that problem this time, but he's always fast when the green flag restarts the race. You know that contact we saw, or the collision, really, on the backstretch during the caution flag with Davey Allison and Jeff Bodine? Well, the Davey's left front tire bumped up against Jeff's right rear tire. Well, the rear suspension on these cars is a lot stronger than the front suspension. The, the rear axle housing is a real, it's a, like a beam axle. The front suspension is a lot more fragile. Davey could be suffering from a toe-out or some kind of front suspension alignment problem. Now we see it's, uh, Jeff's car beginning to go high in the turns again, as we noted just a moment ago. 
first few laps with new tires on he can stay down on the inside of the racetrack and he made several passes but as we see him going to turn he's right back up in that high groove again of course it seems to be working pretty good for him but uh, he doesn't run quite as fast up there as he did when he had the brand new tires on his one lower and a little bit of tire smoke evident from that car on occasion there's the interval between first and the second position Well, Dale Earnhardt, of course, went a lap down early in the race. Low smoke, that's tire smoke coming from his car. He went in that corner pretty hard. And as he started off turn two, you saw that tire smoke coming from his car. That's something he doesn't want to do because uh, they, he'll heat those tires up too much if he abuses them too much and gets too much smoke coming from them. Dale Earnhardt, second in Winston Cup point. Is it the same running for the point lead as it is, say, running for fifth or tenth? Well, it is, really. You just go to each race trying to win races. And, uh, you win them races, them points are going to come. So that's the basic thing we've done uh, for the last two years, is go try to win every race we went to and uh, finish the best we can. So, you know, them points are going to come along with it. You think seven races is a short distance to go, and you look at the points and say, well, it's got a, Bill's got a pretty good lead, but that could change you one race just like it did with Rusty and Richmond. So, you know, you can't never count the chickens for that. Well, it is interesting that the leader in Winston Cup points is leading this race, and second in Winston Cup points is second in the race. Unfortunately, the third place uh, individual in the Winston Cup points, Rusty Wallace, has had uh, not a very good race and will certainly lose more in his quest for the Winston Cup title. Well, Rusty has run good here today, Bob, but he's had uh, some unscheduled pit stops, some green flag pit stops, which cost him a lap each time, and uh, it, he just been played position right now only a lap down but uh rusty does have a long way to go probably in turn two. two car down to the inside of the racetrack we can't see there it is eddie bearswell in car number 23 has fun to the uh inside of the racetrack in corner number two and it'll bring out our ninth caution of the afternoon eddie moving around looks like he was trying to get the car going but it you can see his left arm forward on the switches. That's the starter button. He's trying to get the engine to start up again. I don't think he hit anything. We'll see if we can tell. Well, he's down on the inside. It looks like a Dave Marcus's car, and the back end just breaks loose as he comes around. And there's the Brad Teague, car number 67, going by him. And he almost gets it straightened out. And then it goes down the inside. He has the wheels locked and just pulls it right down there in the dirt. So a little bit of contact there with a Dave Marcus car. Here come several in for pit stops, including Dale Earnhardt. Dick Bergman can report on this. Now they're going to put some scuffed tires on Dale Earnhardt's car. They've got nobody down here that's running tires in for them, as is the case with Bill Elliott. But they got a pit full of scuffed tires anyway. Hard to say where they've come from. They're not going to exactly say. Earnhardt has the front pit. That is the advantage. It's the best possible place to pit. But Jeff Bodine is going to speed him out. Earnhardt's going to follow as many parts as in the middle. Earnhardt moving back out. Several others remain on pit road, however. Darrell Walters is still in. So is the 21 car of uh, Kyle Petty and the 28 car of Davey Allison. But there is Jeff Bodine, who did pick up a spot in this uh, shuffle out of the pit area. Bill Elliott chose not to come in that time. Let's see if he does this time. Call it out if he will. We're seeing three different strategies by the first three cars. The leader did not pit at all. The second place car, Dale Earnhardt, got four tires on a pit stop. The third place car, Jeff O'Dine, got two tires on a pit stop. So that shuffled everything around. That's going to make it interesting on down the line into the race. We'll see who has the advantage in all of that when we come back in just a moment to our live coverage of the Delaware 500. 347 laps are completed. Bob Jenkins, Ned Jarrett, Gary Nelson, Larry Newber, Jerry Punch, and Dick Bergman back at Dover Downs International Speedway as we go back to green in the Delaware 500. 349 laps completed. Bill Elliott in number nine leads the race, and Jeff Bodine in number five is in second position. Now, Dale Earnhardt came in for a little bit of a splash and go that has put him in the uh, tail end of the field. He's trying to move up through the traffic and get back in a competitive position, but it is Elliott and Bodine now that are very close, and again, the strategy, Elliott did not choose to come in that time. Jeff took, in, took on uh, two new tires. But I can imagine what was going on in the pits. You know, Dale Earnhardt and Jeff Bodine racing close on the racetrack. 
and then Dale Earnhardt crew seeing Jeff Bodine leaving the pits and saying wait a minute nobody beats us out of the pits they apparently dropped the jack too soon before all the lug nuts were tight Dale Earnhardt had to come back in the pits while it was still under caution that put him way back in the pack he has however gotten back up to third position and Davy Allison there in car number 28 is in fourth the fifth held by Kyle Petty, sixth is Marlin, seventh is Mike Alexander, eighth is Phil Carson, ninth is Dale Jarrett, tenth is uh, Neil Bonnet, in eleventh position is Morgan Shepard, and in twelfth position is Rusty Wallace. Those drivers are one lap down. Well, toward the end of the race, we're going to be announcing the Goodyear Eagle driver of the race, and Goodyear will be giving $1,000 the Winston Cup Wives Association in that driver's name. And we will be announcing that in just a few moments. Just out of the hospital is Alan Kowicki, who had uh, a problem up in turn number two in the number 67 car, driven by Brad Teague, has apparently suffered a blown engine and is low on the racetrack down the backstretch. Let's go to Larry Newber, who is with Alan Kowicki as the yellow flag comes out. Alan, another yellow flag. We're yet to find out exactly the reason for this one. You took a hard hit. First of all, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. You really had an opportunity to win this race today, did you? Well, Bill Elliott was pretty tough, you know, but we were just catching up, trying to make up our lap from when we had blistered a tie earlier. We made up our lap. We were in contention. We were, you know, I was having a pretty good race with Earnhardt there. I think we were as good as anyone, except maybe Elliott, you know, and who knows what would have happened, but the Zurich... Amigo Fort Thunderbird was running great, and we were just one of about 10 people at Blue Tires today and ended up in the wall. Alan, unlike many of the drivers, you are also a car owner. Your feelings and your reflections on so many tires being blown. Pretty hard to take, you know. I mean, you know, not only did it cost us a chance for a win or a good finish in this race, but we wrecked a race car in the process. And it's not like this is the second week in a row. It's been happening. It's been happening all year long really a little bit disappointed that the tire companies can't get this solved by now that people are still crashing cars like this you know fortunately the cars are pretty safe and no one got hurt well all the leaders are taking this opportunity to duck into pit road indeed they are larry there goes bill elliott out of the pit davy allison comes out so does jeff bodine ahead of davy allison and others who are uh, in the top 10 are also moving back out onto the racetrack we're going to try to contact Davey Allison here on the, on the radio. Davey, this is Bob Jenkins up at ESPN. You got a copy? Yes, Bob, go ahead. Davey, last time in the pit stops, there was some contact between you and Jeff on uh, pit road and also on the racetrack. First of all, why? And secondly, uh, we noticed your car dropping back after that. Did you have some damage to the car? No, Bob. Uh, as I was leaving the pit, Jeff pulled out in front of me, and I was going too fast to stop, and we hit on pit road so i pulled back up beside him to say something to him about it you know just to ask him to give me a little room and as i did i think he was going to warm up his tires and we hit down there in the first turn but uh you know it wasn't anything intentional and the only th the only reason the car has been dropping back has been because the tires just haven't been working out right for us in the last couple sets but we think we got a good set on this handling thought it's under burn now and we want to go out here and try to get back up closer to the front can you beat Bill Elliott? He's certainly been the fastest car all day. Have you been able to ascertain just how strong he is? Well, as of this point, we've been running some lap times at certain times during the race that were equal to his best lap. So we don't know if we can beat him or not right now, but we're going to sure give it a try. All right, Davey, thank you. We'll let you go back to work. Good luck the rest of the race. Well, thank you, Bob, and uh, I'd like to say hello to my dad and my mom back home and all the family and tell them we'll be there to see them tomorrow. All right, and we say hello to your family also in uh, Alabama as they are watching this race, I'm sure, on ESPN and seeing Davies still very much in the thick of things right now shown in fifth position. Less than 150 laps to go in this afternoon of Winston Cup racing from Dover, Delaware. Bill under caution at Dover and a very relaxed uh, Dale Jarrett is... Uh, trying to uh, stretch the muscles and relax just a little bit before we go back to green and rick wilson is also uh, relaxing here as we are still under our 10th caution period of the day davy allison has come in again and we talked to him just a few minutes ago and he said there was no problems with the car but indeed the crew is working on the left side of that car to possibly uh, bend out the sheet metal 
You know, they said that uh, they didn't have a problem, or Davey did, but I bet you after that four-tire stop they just made, they probably saw a real shiny area on one of the tires. That means the tire was rubbing, but not enough to smoke, so they, it looked to me like they were hammering on the left front fender, trying to just get a little more assurance. Yeah, be safe. rather be safe than so sorry, especially after what we've seen so far today. Well, there are only five cars in the lead lap, and he certainly will stay in the lead lap. Dale Earnhardt is leading the race for the first time today, I believe. Very important situation for him because it gives him five Winston Cup bonus points. Sure is nice to see Harold Kinder back in the starter stand as he gives him the one more lap to go signal. Harold, of course, missed some races uh, during the year because of some uh, surgery on his finger, but he's back in the starter stand and it's good to see him once again there. And Bob, speaking of surgery, let's say hello to Shorty Edwards in Catawba, North Carolina, who's the tire expert on the Junior Johnson Budweiser team. Shorty has had a tough time the last month or so. He had back surgery about a month ago, and then the week before last, he had to have back surgery again, and uh, he's been, uh, been down, so Shorty, get well quick. Let's go to Jerry Punston in the pit. We're with Tony Price. Tony, why the extra stop a minute ago? Why'd you bring Davey back in? Uh, he had a little contact with the five tire on pit road earlier, and it, it pushed the uh, fender in on the tire, and we could see with the tire we took off that it was cutting, the fender was cutting the tire, so we decided to bring him back in, beat the fender out, and he should be in good shape. Jerry Nelson, you should have been a doctor. You diagnosed it perfectly. <laughs> Going back to green. And that was not a southern accent from Tony Price. Uh, way down south. <laughs> That's a, a, a New Zealand accent. Okay. He comes the field off the fourth corner. Harold Kinder waves the green. We're back to racing. Dale Earnhardt leads the Delaware 500 now. He's got a couple of cars ahead of him as they try to get some laps back, including the uh, number... 27 car of uh, Rusty Wallace, and I believe that will put Rusty back in the lead lap, won't it? Yes, if he can get back in uh, around Dale Earnhardt, it would put him back in the lead lap. He was two laps down, and he got by Bill Elliott earlier, and the caution came out, so he was able to get around Dale Earnhardt here, so that's put him back in contention. Went. And the number 55 car of Bill Parsons is also back on the lead lap. Wouldn't that be a feat if Rusty Wallace could catch a caution right now, get back in the lead lap, set up a finish with Dale Earnhardt, Bill Elliott, and Rusty Wallace? Huh? You know, you, you can't count them out here at Dover. So many things can happen. You're absolutely right. That would be quite a story. We'll see if that does happen. There is Elliott trying to move back up to the inside of uh, Terry Labonte in car number 11, and right behind him is the five car of Jeff Bodine. Kyle Petty, meanwhile, is right ahead of Bill Elliott. There he is, the number 21 Wood Brothers, Sidco Ford. He is in second. This is the first time today that Bill Elliott really has been caught in traffic on the restart. He's been up front all the time, so he's having to, to battle through there, but it didn't take him long to move around Kyle Petty, did he? Well, you know, the pit stop got shuffled with those three quick cautions right in a row that we had, and Bill Elliott finally said, well, maybe there won't be many more cautions. They can't keep up, so let me come in and get four tires while Dale Earnhardt stayed on the track that time. That was the reverse of what we saw just at the beginning of that run round of pit stop. So I think that uh, Bill Elliott is setting his sights on Dale Earnhardt now, but the reason he is back there is because of the, the shakeup on the, the uh, out-of-sync pit stop. Elliot is really closing in on Dale Earnhardt. Now right behind him in the battle for the lead. There are the first four cars. Now we focus in on the battle for the lead. Elliot moves to the inside of Earnhardt. Now the back straight they go side by side. In the three, Bill has the lead again. Uh -oh. Boy, does he show his strength. Now, he, this is the first time today that he's had to pass any of the front-running cars. He's been out in front, and uh, two few cars have passed him and got their laps back, but when the time came that he needed to go, he did it. You know, back a while ago when Bill Elliott left, it almost appeared that he let Dale Earnhardt get his lap back. I was questioning the, uh, that move. Should he have really raced him and kept uh, Earnhardt a lap down? Now I can see the confidence that Bill Elliott has in his car. He, he just took the wind out of these guys' tails as he went by them all. You know, they, they were all getting a spark of encouragement. Here comes Bill Elliott just blows them away. Kyle Petty is dropping back a little bit as the number five car of Jeff Bodine has moved to third now. And uh, the 21 car of Kyle Petty drops back just a little bit. Certainly Jeff Bodine is not out of the, uh, out of the race by any means. You know, there's two cars we haven't talked much about today. That is Jeff Bodine and Kyle Petty. They've both been right there, but they haven't been leaders. They've just been inside of the leaders. Now, later and later in the race, we're seeing more and more of those two cars. So they may be contenders here on into the race. Well, Jerry 
Gary Funk has talked to Ernie Elliott, who's Bill Elliott's crew chief. And uh, Gary, what kind of confidence do they have in there? Well, Dad, they're pretty confident here in the chorus pit. In fact, Ernie's sitting here watching his brother Bill clocking him lap by lap. They come by, and when you consider how dominant Bill has been here, you remember they destroyed their good car here early in the week. Let's ask Ernie a little bit about what's going on. And Ernie, you got to feel pretty good. The car seems to be running so well. You're pretty confident about what's going on today. Well, you know, you can't ever be too confident here. I mean, that, you know, cars in one race a year from 10 laps down with just a few laps to go. So. You know, you just got to run the race. Don't worry about it. Hope you make it. Ernie Elliott here in the kitchen. Rusty Wallace is going to slide by. And Rusty Wallace will make an unscheduled stop. Let's go down to Dick Burton. Dick? Well, Jerry has this off in the gate here today. Unscheduled stop. Good at tires. We're going to change the tires on the right side of Rusty Wallace's car. Hope that's going to help him run a little bit better. Well, in the last couple of races, if Rusty Wallace had... Uh, that he has experienced uh, last week with the crash and today just as he was back on the lead lap the car developed a tire problem and there you can see bill elliott going around him and putting him two laps down now so rusty wallace has just had one problem after another here this afternoon there is elliott the leader dale earnhardt runs second jeff bodine is third kyle petty fourth and davy allison fifth those five cars are still back at dover where pit stops are being made again because we are in another caution period the 11th of the afternoon we'll show you why in just a moment let's right now show you bill elliott's pit stop they're changing four tires on that car he's on the top dale earnhardt is on the bottom of the richard childress crew also changing four tires on the dale earnhardt machine there goes bill elliott pulling away as they continue to work on Dale Earnhardt and he now moves away from his road and here is the reason for the yellow it is Morgan Shepard in car number 88 a big puff of smoke from that car I don't think he hit the wall but the uh, something happened mechanically with that car evidently the engine let go you see a lot of smoke from the car and he just drove it high up out of the racing groove up next to the wall a very cool and smart move by Morgan Shepard to move up on the outside of the racetrack and you can see the smoke continue to bellow from the car, so apparently the engine did let go on the Red Baron Pizza Oldsmobile. Morgan Shepard did not lead a lap today, but he has led for five different car owners this year. Tom Winkle himself, the uh, 33 car, also he's led in the 75 Raymond car, and he has led races in this particular car that's owned by Buddy Baker. So his car is being pulled off of the racetrack, and now we'll take another break and be right back for more. Laps to go, the field down the back stretch. Uh, under caution, but we will be going green this next time around as the uh, field begins to uh, get into its restart formation. And Bob, again, a caution has been to the benefit of one driver, Phil Parsons. In this case, he was in front of Bill Elliott when the caution came out, so that has put him back in the lead lap. We now have six drivers in the lead lap. Bill Elliott, the leader. Second place is Dale Earnhardt. Jeff Bedine is third. 28th car of Davey Allison is fourth. Kyle Petty and now Phil Parsons. And they come down for the green flag. That's Sterling Marlin ahead of Bill Elliott on the racetrack in the high groove. However, Sterling is uh, also not on the same lap as Bill Elliott. Elliott leads. That's Jeff Bodine in the yellow car in second position. And Dale Earnhardt is in second now in car number three. Boy, as he yeah. tries to get the lead away from uh, Bill Elliott. Heavy traffic here in the third and fourth turn. Three of fresh racing, and by golly, Dale Earnhardt comes out in the lead. I'll tell you, if you don't believe that fellow has all kind of guts, I mean, you just <laughs> put him in a race car and drop a green flag, and he'll go. What and a, look what a the, move. Look at the second place battle. Jeff Bodine and Bill Elliott. And Bodine has second now, as Elliott is caught behind by Mike Alexander. Here comes Bodine to the inside. And Elliott looking And here's the car the spinning down on the inside. Let's see if that's Davey Allison. It looks like another yeah. car into the wall up on the outside. That's Bill Parsons, who has cracked the wall coming out of turn number four. And, and I, I believe think it Dale was Jarrett's in, in that as well. I think it was Davey Allison that got sideways on the low part of the racetrack. Yeah, Dale Jarrett is also involved in the crash. He's moving down the straightaway as Bill Parsons moves through the pit area. Here it is from Dale's in-car camera. Watch ahead. OK, 
Okay, there's Terry Labonte slowing down, and Dale might have touched him just a little bit. And here is Phil Parsons hitting Dale Jarrett, and Phil spinning around in front of Dale Jarrett. And Jarrett runs into him, and down on the inside, Davey Allison with crossways, I guess just trying to get by all of them. A lot of cars involved in that, a lot more than it looked like just from the first view. And here it is from the outside of our in-car camera. Watch behind Bill Elliott. There it is. As Davey Allison, you see, he lost it down on the inside of the, the racetrack, and I guess other cars slowed down behind them, and that's what started Phil Parsons spinning around and then Dale Jarrett hitting him. And there you can see Dale, who is uh, unstrapping himself and getting out of that car. A tough break. You can see the uh, smoke and the oil on the windshield of that car as Dale climbs out of his car. Well... It's been a very good afternoon. Despite the way it ends, it's been a good day for Dale Jarrett. Dick, let's talk with him. Well, climbing out of the smoke and steam, Dale Jarrett, until just a few moments ago, it looked like you might have been the winner. Yeah, I tell you, this Hardy's Oldsmobile really ran good today. Give a lot of credit to my crew, Elmo Langley and the guys had me a good race car. We got a little fender banger there with, in the pits, Alan and Cole Wicky got us a lap down, but we still had a good car. We started getting an overheating problem now. I was just having to take it easy. And then somebody got into Davey Allison up there. And I went high, and then somebody hit me and knocked me into the wall. So what we thought might be a good day turned out not so good. Give it out to the driver, too. He's done a great job today. Bob? Yes, he has indeed. But it appears to be all over now for Dale Jarrett. Now, let's watch it again from the in-car camera and listen to the noise. We'll just uh, be silent here as you watch and listen. almost feel it, Ned. Yeah, you really can. Uh, you can see Davey Allison's car spinning sideways up ahead of Dale, and then, uh, of course, uh, he, he tapped the car number 11 of Terry Labonte, but that didn't do any damage to either of them. And then Phil Parsons came on the inside of him, and as they had slowed down, Phil came on the inside and hit Dale and spun in front of him, and around they went and into each other and into the wall. So no injury there to Dale Jarrett, but he sure was bounced around in that car a lot as he got into the wall, as did Bill Parsons. But both of, at least Parsons, still under caution at Dover Downs, our 12th caution period of the afternoon. Let's take a look at the top 10 as we have them right now. The leader is Dale Earnhardt. Jeff Bodine is second, Bill Elliott third, then Davey Allison and Kyle Petty. In sixth position is Sterling Marlin, and seventh is Phil Parsons. Now Marlin is back on the lead lap. Mike Alexander is eighth, Neil Bonnet is ninth, and Rusty Wallace is in tenth position. Well, okay, we've got, uh, let's see, 117 laps to go. Ned, who is going to win the Delaware 5? <laughs> Boy, and the world. We could always anybody have else Yeah, I understand. <laughs> uh, and how can you go against anybody but Bill Elliott, as dominant as that car has been here today? So he's, he's my pick. All right, Gary. Well... Ned, since you took Bill Elliott, I'm going to have to go with Dale Earnhardt. I think Dale Earnhardt has shown a lot of uh, potential. He's getting his car better and better. Let's go to Jerry Punch and see what he has to take. Well, with six of the last seven races here being won by a Ford, I'll pick a Ford to three of the top five for Fords right now, but I'll go with Bill Elliott. I'm also going to go that short limb. Elliott's my pick. Okay, uh, the green comes back out, but... Uh the restart. Dick Bergren. Well, Bob Jenkins, I'll tell you how I can pick the winner. I'm standing in Earnhardt's pit, and nobody in their right mind would argue with these guys. If you're standing here, I'm going to go with Dale Earnhardt. Larry Newber, who do you think is going to win? Well, Dick, I think that Dale Earnhardt has been holding back something all day long. I think there's more left. He's very tenacious. He wants to win here where he's never won before. Well, it seems like uh, that uh, we have a split opinion between the Bill Elliott and the Dale Earnhardt. What did you say? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're waiting, Bob. <laughs> uh, Bill Elliott. Although I, I don't count Jeff Bodine out of this thing completely. He's been up there all afternoon. I'm going to say Elliott, but uh, my second pick would be Jeff Bodine. Here comes the field off the fourth corner, and Bill, and rather, rather Dale Earnhardt is the leader at the moment with, with Bodine in second position. Mike Alexander is third in line, and fourth in line there is the number 83 car of Lake Speed. Well, let me clear this up, Bob. Can you no, 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 no. 
Bill Elliott is going to win. Okay. But I like Jeff. <laughs> but, <laughs> okay, we'll watch and see. It's going to be very interesting, I'll tell you. Yeah, Benny, it is. Benny Parsons is in the pits uh, with the hood up on his car. Benny's been having a pretty good run here today, but uh, apparently something going wrong with his car. Here comes Bill Elliott now. He doesn't seem to be moving through the traffic quite as fast as he has in uh, previous times. I believe he's just biding his time. He's not going to, to rush through that traffic. He has already passed every car on the racetrack at least one time. And uh, he says, uh, I'll just take it sort of easy here, not taking any unnecessary chances. He's got one more pit stop to make. If this thing goes green the rest of the way, he's going to have to stop one more time. So will everybody else. And so he's not going to abuse that car too much at this point. That's Davey Allison, by the way, on the far right side of your screen there behind Bill Allison. And Ricky Rudd in number 26. But you know, just when that caution came out, it was Davey Allison spun. And by the way, Davey Allison's right back in the thick of it again. Mm -hmm. But just before that caution came out, we saw some real jockeying for some positions, really hard racing going on. And I think everybody said, all the crew chiefs have probably talked to these drivers and said, look, it's not over yet. You guys are trying way too hard. You know, just kind of fall into a position that's comfortable and let's start racing with about maybe 50 laps to go instead of 120 laps to go. Now, there is Rusty Wallace in number 27. He has gotten one lap back. He is still one lap down, and he has shown, however, in eighth position. It's been an uphill struggle all afternoon for Rusty Wallace, that's for sure. Well, he had gotten two laps down once before, had just got back in the lead lap, then had to make another unscheduled pit stop, went two laps down, then the caution came out that he got back in front of the leader once again, picked up one of those laps. So, boy, he has really been battling, and that's the characteristic of, of Rusty Wallace. He's a hustler. What an uphill struggle for, not only for Rusty, he, he, I'm sure going to be very tired at the end of the day. The crew, too, they're hustling. You, we saw Barry Dodson burning his hand, trying to put the sp spark plug wire back on. All the problems they've had, it really takes a toll on everybody. You know, fatigue is one of the biggest things we think about in the pit area late in the race. The drivers aren't near as sharp as they were at the beginning of the race. Everybody's tired. We're trying to find tough tires to put on the car. Everybody's running around trying to make sure your car stays in contention, getting lost laps back. It's a struggle all day, and everybody is going to be completely worn out at the finish here. Rusty Wallace has won twice this year in Winston Cup competition. There is Davey Allison, who has won one time this year, just last weekend in Richmond. The lead up front is held by Dale Earnhardt in number three. There's Jeff Bodine in the yellow and white number five, Levi Garrett Chevrolet in second position. But there is Bill Elliott, and he has moved through that traffic now and is closing in on Jeff Bodine. That's the number 12 car of Mike Alexander. That is between Bodine and Elliott. Here comes Elliott, though, as he moves to the high side of Alexander into the third, third turn. And Alexander isn't giving that position away from Jeff Bodine. No, his car is uh, working good right now. Bodine's car seems to still have a tendency to go up a little bit. And, Bob, you said that uh, David won one race. Let's give him the race at Michigan a little bit earlier, too. He has two wins to credit so far this year. All right. position passing Jeff Bodine and so now there is a car between first and second Mike Alexander however Elliott is beginning to close in once again on Dale Earnhardt well, Elliott has uh, just sort of bided his time coming up through that traffic not taking any unnecessary chances whatsoever we're putting the clock on Bill Elliott see how fast he is running as he's running in traffic pulling up on Mike Alexander there now but he's not pushing that car to its full ability at all the lap to get an idea of how fast the pace is at this point. He crosses the line and stops the clock in 25.3 seconds. Now, if you clock him the next time around, he'll be going faster because he has moved around Mike Alexander, who was holding him up a little bit. And now clear sailing between Elliott and Dale Earnhardt. That really was a good lap time this late in the race. I, I was really surprised. I think more and more rubber is going down into the racing surface and causing the cars to run faster and faster. That, that was a good lap time for this late in the race. Now we're timing Dale Earnhardt to see how his lap compares with that of Bill Elliott. Now I got my stopwatch going on uh, Bill Elliott, so we'll see just how they do compare on this as they circle around the racetrack. Earnhardt running a good line now. Off the fourth quarter, Earnhardt will stop the clock in 25.9 seconds. 
what you're getting at. 25 87, so not too much yeah, difference in the speed of the two cars. Yep, just about the same. Well, Dick Bergeron is down in the pit area with the guy who's had another very good race. He had an extremely strong race in Darlington, had a good one here today, Benny Parsons. Yeah, it's been a while since he's won, but Benny Parsons is still one of the most popular drivers in this field. Benny, what happened? What put you out? Something happened to the clutch, Dick. Uh, they had a restart. I shifted to third gear, and there wasn't anything there. Uh, I dropped in high, and it would accelerate a little bit, but the, but the uh, thing would, clutch would flip. I just had to stop. What do you think about the leaders, Benny? Who looks best to you? I never saw him all day. Who is the leader? <laughs> I mean, I was back there in a race with five or six cars all day. That's all I ever saw. I would make a pit stop, and I'd come out right with him again. Uh, that's Benny Parsons in the garage area. He's going to watch the race along with the rest of us and find out for sure who's going to win this thing. All right, and at the moment, Dale Earnhardt is the leader with Bill Elliott in second position, and there are exactly 100 laps to go. 400 are complete in the 500 lap, 500 mile, Delaware 500. We'll be back to read out is on its feet watching this tremendous battle for third position between Jeff Bodine in car number five and Davey Allison in number 28. Davey has made a real bid for the third spot here. He's been underneath Jeff Bodine for the last few laps. Jeff is holding him off, but I tell you, Davey is right there and looking for that third spot. And so is Sterling Marlin, who has gotten back in the thick of it. He got back in the lead lap, and so he's right there in the thick of that battle. But meanwhile, Bill Elliott has caught Dale Earnhardt. Yeah, Bill Elliott closing in on Dale Earnhardt. You know, the last time we saw Elliott go around Dale Earnhardt, he just kind of blew by him. This time, it looks like he's taking a lot more time with him. Maybe this set of tires isn't quite as good on Elliott's car, and maybe this set of tires is a lot better on uh, Dale Earnhardt's car. Here we go again. Three-car battle for third spot. Odine, Davey Allison, and Sterling Marlin in car number 44. Davey Allison might have him this time. Yes, indeed. Davey has third position now. Odine back to fourth. Here comes Sterling Marlin. We have a crash. Eddie Beerswall on the back stretch, car number 23. has some contact with the wall or another car because the right side of that car is the damage now they'll race back to the yellow Bodine pulls ahead of Davy Allison now let's see who wins the battle for the top spot Earnhardt retains it but we don't have a yellow no evidently uh Beerswall was able to get down out of the traffic and so we had no yellow that time so they just continue to race all right Pierce Whale is at the bottom of the racetrack making his way toward pit road he's out of uh, the uh, danger of uh, anybody else on the track so no yellow and uh, Allison has dropped two positions in that little exchange there. Well, you almost saw Davy let off the gas when his crew said the yellow's going to be out there. The wreck. Davy let off the gas. We, uh, Bob, uh, Jeff Bodine and Shirley Marlin shot right back by him. Now Marlin and Bodine are going at it. We're trying to keep uh, track of all the battles on the racetrack. Marlin now to the inside of Bodine in turn number two, and Sterling Marlin moves to third place. Here comes Davey, though. As you indicated, uh, Gary, I think he just backed off because he thought there was going to be a yellow, but now he says, okay, it's still green, and here we go. Now the lead is being contested as Elliott is trying to take over the top spot from Dale Earnhardt. Where do you look on this racetrack? Is there <laughs> action everywhere? Well, there certainly is, and Bill Elliott now has decided to make that move. Earnhardt starts slipping a little high in the turns, and Elliott taking advantage of it. Oh, but he doesn't get the lead just yet as Earnhardt battles right back on the outside. Here they come off of the fourth corner there, door handle to door handle. Earnhardt does lead this lap, which is lap 409, and Elliott now decides to fall back into second position. Look at this, though. It's the 5-28 and 28 battle that's going on for fourth spot now as Sterling Marlin has nailed down third. Davey Allison on the bottom of the racetrack and Jeff Bodine high in this contest for fourth. Now, Petty now has just moved up right behind them, so he's in the thick of that battle as well. I can't believe the racing. This late in the race, this is not Dover to see this kind of racing this late. This is really, uh, I think it's, a, it's, you know, so many cautions we've had today. It's hard to imagine these guys this close, this late in the race. There is a fan in this entire facility that is not standing, watching the battles on the racetrack. Here is Allison passing Jeff Bodine, and Davey Allison now goes to fourth. 
Allison has uh, fought quite a bit of adversity here today himself. We've seen him in two near spins, but he didn't go around either time. Going off his fourth turn, he had a right rear tire go flat one time and got bumped one time and uh, managed to hold on to the car without spinning completely around. And they've continued to work on that Havilene Star Ford Thunderbird and got him in back in the thick of the battle. Now Kyle Petty trying to move on the inside of Lake Speed. Lake is at least one lap down, maybe a couple, but Kyle running in the sixth position. Jeff Bodine running in fifth at the moment. Kyle wants to get up there and get back on the leaderboard. Well, what do you guys think? Uh, Davey Allison had two half spins today. Do you, should we play them with a one full spin? Or yeah, I guess you could, yeah. One, uh, two uh, 90s equal one uh, or whatever. <laughs> now we see uh, Kyle Petty right behind uh, Jeff Bodine. Uh, Benny, are you with us down in Pitt Central? Yes. Yes, Bob Jenkins. I'm here watching. Uh, I've got about 100 yards, I can see. Oh, I tell you, <laughs> we've seen some great racing out there. Now we've had uh, apparently another incident as uh, the yellow may come out again. It's down the back stretch. And the yellow flag is out. We don't know who's involved at the moment. There it is. It's the number 10 car of Ken Bouchard, who has crashed and uh, is against the inside wall on the back stretch. You see him moving around in the cockpit. Apparently, he's okay. He's hanging up the goggles on the rearview mirror, so apparently Ken is okay. But it does bring out another caution period, our 13th of the afternoon. We're 75 laps from the end. I guess, guys, this could be considered the final fuel stop if uh, we can't go the rest of the way now on fuel. Yeah, I think we're 85 laps from the from the end of the race. Right. So we've completed 415, and yes, they should be able to go the rest of the way as far as fuel is concerned. There's the Bouchard car. He was, he was running in uh, what? 17th, 17th position when, okay. when he had this uh, misfortune. Proceeds the top rookie contender on the NASCAR Winston Cup circuit this year. He was having a good run. It moved into the top 20 and it hung in there all day until he had this problem. You know, if I were the crew chief on any one of these contenders, I would consider this, I would treat this as if it were the last caution of the day. I would put my best set of tires on the car right now and fill it up with gas. Let's go to Jerry Punch in the pit. Bill Elliott brings the course four down pit road. Bill Elliott on the top, Dale Earnhardt on the bottom. Right side tires on the Dale Earnhardt's car. Likewise, same on the Bill Elliott's car. Now the Elliott crew. More to the left side. Earnhardt's crew already on the left side of the car. It'll be a race down those pits. It may be the final pit stop of the day. Left side tires already on. The good race Chevrolet. Earnhardt is down and away. Elliott's car now up the jack. Earnhardt will win the race in the pits. And Mike Alexander will be the third car down pit road. Jeff Bodine also leaving the pit area as what could be the last series of pit stops has occurred. The record speed in this race is 124.706, and before we had this most recent caution, the average speed of this race, 108.601. It's a slow race, and it's even slower now because of this 14th, make that 13th, caution period of the afternoon because of the Ken Bussard crash on the back stretch. Let's try to talk to Rusty Wallace here. Uh, Rusty, this is Bob Jenkins. You got a copy? Go ahead. Rusty, you have had uh, adversity after adversity, but on the other hand, you have battled and scraped your way back. Uh, how do you assess what's going on right now? Do you have a chance? I got a chance. I got a lot of laps left. You know, it's only lap 418. Uh, I'm one lap in. I'm sitting in a good position right now. Whenever he starts a race, I'll be in the inside lane up front on fresh tires. Have most of your problems involved the tires, this situation? Yeah, really. I've had a couple flat tires. Uh, had a blister tire the first of the race. Probably didn't have the car set just right, you know, and uh, I was pushing a lot. But other than that, uh, yeah, it's been tire related, but I don't know if it's been good year's fault or not. Okay, Rusty, uh, back to work, and we'll talk to you later, hopefully, and uh, best of luck the rest of the way. All right, thank you very much. Try to talk to Mike Alexander. Mike, this is Bob Jenkins at ESPN. You got a copy on me? All right, we'll try it again. Mike Alexander, this is Bob Jenkins. You copy me? Well, apparently we can't get through to him, but uh, some good comments from uh, Rusty Wallace there. Maybe we can uh, maybe we can contact Davey Allison. Davey, this is Bob Jenkins again. You copy? 
Yes, Bob, go ahead. All right, uh, you're, I assume, set for the finish of the race, for, uh, providing we go the rest of the way on green. Uh, can you win it? Well, we feel like we've got a real good shot at it. Every time we get on a good set of tires, caution comes out right away, and we don't get to make any progress. So, uh, you know, right now we're on another good set of tires that we say from the first of the race, and we feel like we're in good shape for the end. But there's a couple of guys up there that's pretty tough. You know, Dale Earnhardt and Bill Elliott, both uh, are real tough competitors, and also Rusty Wallace and Jeff Bodine. Davey, this has been a Ford racetrack in previous years. Uh, would you think that the Elliott or Earnhardt uh, are the strongest at the moment? Well, uh, I think it's pretty even between all five of the top five cars right now, and I, I, it'd be kind of hard to pick a favorite for the end. All right, we'll uh, let you go and uh, wish you the rest of luck the rest of the way. Thank you. Yellow is still out with 70, make that 80 laps to go as 420 have been complete. Just gone out and racing is resuming. The field moving through the first and second corners as down the back stretch we see that Rusty Wallace is at the moment on the lead lap and he's still trying to hang on to that but Dale Earnhardt would like to put him a full lap down but Rusty stays right in there and stays for the moment on the lead lap. Sterling Marlin has been black flagged. Let's go to Dick Bergeron. Well, apparently, Sterling Marlin was brought into the pit area here. They had black flagged him for a penalty. Boy, I'll tell you, talk about a comedy of errors. They really had problems. They had come in earlier on the caution flag for tires. They didn't have any. They went out and inherited the lead. Then they were looking for their tires. Then he changed the tires. It could have been his race to come today. All right, three cars battling for the lead here. Two, especially Earnhardt and Elliott. Elliott has the lead on the outside of the racetrack. Second is Earnhardt, and third is Jeff Bodine. Mike Alexander is also in the thick of things in car number 12. Okay, he looked awfully strong just before that last caution came out when Earnhardt and Bill Elliott were battling for the lead. Mike Alexander was right there trying to get his lap back. Now, he is one lap down, but he has really been strong here in the last 100 miles or so. Benny Parsons has dropped out of the race. He's joined us, though, in Pitt Central. Benny, this is not a typical Dover race as we've talked about. First of all, we had the early tire problems that no one anticipated, and to see the action between these guys this late in the race is really unusual for this place. This is unbelievable. I tell you, I've never seen a Dover like this. And I don't care where you're talking about. If you're talking about first or the race for 10th, it seems like they're all running absolutely the same speed. Yeah, we had a great battle going on for the lead about uh, 15 or 20 laps ago. There was also a great battle going on for third position. But right now, Bill Elliott is showing the way. And I'll tell you, it'd be awful hard to uh, choose against him. We asked uh, everybody on the broadcast team a little while ago who they thought were going to win. Now that you've had a chance to uh, watch a little bit of the race, who do you think has got the strongest car out there? It looks like right now, Bill Elliott. But <laughs> let's, Rusty Wallace has made up, you told me a moment ago, three laps today. So, if he can make up three laps, he is a car to be reckoned with. We're watching uh, Rick Wilson from the in-car camera go behind the wall because of uh, apparently an overheating problem. They've been trying to cool off the engine of that car for quite some time, but he apparently has given up and is back in the garage area. So the Kodak number four car driven by Rick Wilson is out of the race. Yes, Bob Jenkins, the car was running as he went by me, but there was water coming out the overflow. It was an overheating problem. Here comes the number three car of Earnhardt battling with Mike Alexander, not for position, though. Dale is just simply trying to uh, put Alexander behind him so that he'll have clear sailing between himself and the leader, Phil Elliott. But now Earnhardt slipped just a little bit, and Alexander pulls away just a little. Let's go to uh, Larry Newber quickly for some comments. Bob, this is a, almost a question for Benny. Benny, I've heard from three car owners in the last 15 minutes who said, we are only comfortable going 35 or 40 laps on a set of tires. Now, everybody has enough fuel to go the distance, but do you suppose if we stay green that everybody will go to the end on the set of tires they have right now? They will try. Now, whether or not they can make it or not, that's another thing, but they will try. Uh, the question I've got for you guys, has Bill Elliott had any tire trouble today? Uh, no, as a matter of fact, Nothing I don't... major. Yeah. Early in the race, he, he had uh, some blisters on the outside. Of, uh, in fact, the first set of tires that he took off of the car, but since then, we have not seen any kind of tire problems on this car. Did you, Benny, have tire problems during your race? Yes, I did. I had um, 
I blistered. Uh, one time I stopped and both the right sides were blistered, the right front and the right rear. So, uh, you know, when you have a situation like that, there's not too much you can adjust. You just put another set on and hope that you can feel it when it happens. And fortunately, the, the two times I did have a problem with tires today, I felt it made a pit stop. Now we see Jeff Bodine in car number five and uh, Davey Allison in car number 28. They're separated by a little bit of racetrack, but uh, they are running in third and fourth position. And those tire problems that were a surprise to us, were they a surprise to you? We didn't see evidence of a tire problem during practice or qualifying. You're right. There was never any uh, forewarning that we was going to have tire problems. The temperature was cool. The wear was good. I really don't know exactly what happened. But I don't know if you guys give it, if ESPN gives an award for uh, the greatest driving job or whatever, but I was behind Davey Allison about 50 laps ago. And let me tell you, folks, I don't know if you got to see it on the screen or not, but he had the little fella about 90 degrees sideways and saved it. Unbelievable. Yeah, we do give a, an award for driver of the race, so we'll consider that as your candidate for such an honor. Thank you. <laughs> Well, Benny, this is Gary Nelson in the booth. You know, this week you and I were, had a chance to test a vibration tester down in Atlanta while we were doing some testing. And I think this would be a really good place to, to have one of those, don't you? Oh, it'd be terrific, especially, you know, you feel a problem and you don't know exactly what it is. And, you know, when you know there's tire problems going on, you're an idiot to stay out there. But yet when you stop and there's nothing wrong, the crew says you're an idiot. <laughs> so you've really got a problem, and when you you don't know if the vibration is severe enough to come in. That indicator that you had would have told me, hey, I do have some chunks out of this right front. It is it's vibrating badly enough to set off this machine. That means i got to go into pit. Gary, is this something that NASCAR is looking at as we look at the leader, Bill Elliott? Well, we're just developing it. This is our first real test with it in Atlanta. What it is is four little red lights. Each one is marked for a different tire on the car. Right front, right rear, left rear, and left front. And when the rubber starts chunking off a tire or it equalizes, it will turn on that light just from the vi extra vibration. The driver may feel a slight vibration, like Benny's saying, and not be sure this light would tell you if you did have a problem. Hmm. Very interesting. There's second place, Dale Earnhardt. And the leader, Bill Elliott. There you can uh, see an indication of uh, how much space separates the two. Elliott moving to the outside and putting in lap on Sterling Marlin, taking his lap back. But Rusty Wallace is still ahead of Bill Elliott and therefore technically on the lead lap. As there you can see Rusty coming out of corner number four ahead of Elliott. Now, Elliot is gaining a little bit on Rusty, but not a great deal. Rusty is running his heart out right now, hoping for a caution flag so that he can get back in the thick of this battle. Elliot has driven away from Dale Earnhardt, who is running in second place, but has not been able to catch up to Rusty and put him a lap down. So Rusty would certainly like to see a piece of debris on the racetrack that would uh, necessitate a caution that would allow him to uh, encircle the entire racetrack and be right up there for the win. At the moment, though, it's Bill Elliott as we have completed as he has a couple of second lead over Dale Earnhardt. Third is Jeff Bodine. Fourth is Davey Allison. And fifth is Kyle Petty. And Jeff Bodine, who was running in third place, has dropped back. Davey Allison has now moved into third. Uh, Bodine's car has slowed down, and Gary, it looks like he might have lost a cylinder or something. It appears that it is something in the engine. You know, we don't see tire smoke. We don't really see anything, but it is visibly running slower than it has been. So I would say he's lost a cylinder. He's not coming into the pit. So he hasn't come to the pit so far, so maybe Gary's punching Jeff Bodine's pit can up there. Well, we're standing beside Waddell Wilson, and Waddell, the car seems to be smoking a little bit and slowing down. What's the problem? Yeah, we just went on seven cylinders. So we trying to keep the car in the lead lap all day and trying to keep the blistered tires, and it's always in good shape, but now we've gone on seven cylinders. So, you know, it's just a bad way to end the day. Well, you can hear it in Waddell Wilson's voice. The car on seven cylinders. They tried all day to stay in the lead lap, and now it's not going to work that way for the final few laps. Jeff beginning to drop back now as Elliott continues to run very, very strong in that Coors Motorcraft board. And he is now 55 laps away from the checkered flag. Rusty Wallace right ahead of him. 
Brian Bangler to stay in the lead lap, and has done a good job of it so far. He just needs a caution. Well, it wasn't just muscle, Russ. He really has shown some muscle today, making up all the laps with all the problems. He Now he is holding off Bill Elliott. Elliott's, you know, obviously not trying as hard as, as it would be for the win right now, but Elliott still isn't putting Rusty away like you would think he has. There's Let's go down to Jerry Punch with a comment, with a comment on the Rusty Wallace. You know, I, I talked to Rusty Wallace earlier in the week. He said, you know, so we're in sort of a gunfight here this last few races on the point battle. And so I've got to bring the best best race car I've got. So basically what happened was we brought a cannon to a gunfight today. This car won at Michigan, finished second at Darlington, finished second at Michigan, and finished second at Charlotte. It has a win in three seconds. It has not finished any worse than second this, this year that we need to finish second or better here today. Well, it's the time of the year that you got to put your best foot forward, no question about it. I'm sure that they would like to have saved that car for the Oakwood Home 500 at Charlotte, North Carolina, in a couple of weeks. But... Uh, now that he got in the point situation, losing points last week at Richmond, Virginia, they just had to put their best shot out there. Well, I'll tell you what, there are so many drivers out on the racetrack that could win our Driver of the Race Award. Let me mention just a few. Rusty Wallace from battling back from many adversities. Davey Allison, who had a couple of near spins, had the car completely sideways once and saved it. You also got to think of Dale Earnhardt, who didn't have a particularly good qualifying, but he's in second position. You got to also think of maybe Kyle Petty or Jeff Bodine. But in our opinion, the Goodyear Eagle Driver of the Race is Bill Elliott. So Goodyear will be sending a check for $1,000 in his name. It will be from a very good driver to a very good cause. And the reason that we've got to choose Bill Elliott, he has just been in total command of this race, really from the drop of the green flag. Oh, you're right, Ned. Bill Elliott, you know, there are a lot of candidates for that award. Uh, it would be a tough decision. It's, uh, but Bill Elliott has dominated 100% of this race. Bill Elliott has been a factor or been in the lead. So, yeah, I agree. And there is Earnhardt, who once again is side-by-side side with Mike Alexander. And he... Mike Alexander just won't give up. I mean, he is hanging right in there. There goes Earnhardt to the inside and, and passing. But there's another possible candidate for driver of the race, Mike Alexander, who's had a very strong performance. Yeah, he's running in seventh position right now. He's back down as a result of a green flag pit stop about uh, 200 miles or so ago and just hasn't been able to make that lap up. But he has raced with the leaders since then, doing a great job in filling the big shoes of Bobby Allison. And I don't mean that Bobby Allison has big feet. I mean that he is such a great race driver that those are big shoes to fill. Yeah, you know, I think the Savola brothers made a very, very good choice in choosing Mike Alexander to fill Bobby's shoes while he is away, hopefully temporarily, from the Winston Cup team. Now we'll review the top ten for you here with uh, just about 50 laps to go in this one, and we'll be back in just a moment. Closing laps of the Delaware 500 with Bill Elliott in the lead. The number 27 car of Rusty Wallace is in sixth position on the lead lap, but uh, just by barely. So Elliott is in the lead. We're going to pan back here and give you an idea of who is still on the racetrack and hopefully tell you what position they are in. Behind Bill Elliott on the track, as he goes in to corner number one, let's find out who is the next car behind him. Dale, Dale Earnhardt, Earnhardt who's running in second place. Second position, Dale Earnhardt, and behind him is Mike Alexander. And he currently is running in the seventh position. Although he is a lap down. There's Earnhardt. There's still six cars on the lead lap. Sterling Marlin now is coming into the pits with smoke coming from the Piedmont Airlines Oldsmobile. And there. behind the car number 12 is the 28 car, Davy Allison, who is currently running in the third position. So those three guys are running right together on the racetrack in contention for the second and the third position. Now behind Davy Allison is the number 83 car of Lake Speed. And Lake is running in the top 10. In fact, I think he's being shown in ninth position at the moment. Bill Parsons has had contact with the wall up in quarter number four during the course of the afternoon, but is still very much in the thick of things. The number 11 car of Terry Labonte has not really been in contention for most of the afternoon, but Terry is still out there on the racetrack. Behind him, we have one of those running in the top five. That is Kyle Petty, who is currently in fourth position. 
And next in line will be, and it looks like Michael Walker has a problem up on turn four. Ricky Rudd would be the next car in line out on the track. We don't see a caution coming as uh, Michael Walker dramatically slowed as he came uh, off a of turn four. And here's Darrell Walker. He's had a lot of problems today, but he's still out there in the race including a badly cracked windshield and a couple of laps with the hood up on the car that he couldn't see anything. And Terry Labonte's in the wall down in turn one. So Terry Labonte brings out another caution period. Here comes well, Rusty Wallace down the straightaway. No, no yellow, yellow yet. yet. Well, Rusty was hoping not. for it. Now the caution is out, but Rusty's going to have to run hard all the way around because it, the caution came out behind him. Yep. Now, we don't know if there's any debris over there on the racetrack where he had his problems or not. Terry Labonte's down on the inside of the racetrack, out of the way. So Terry Le uh, Rusty Wallace running hard Boy, back to the start-finish line. He has really got uh, the pedal to the metal. Here he comes off the fourth corner. I think he's going to beat Bill to the flag. Yes, indeed. Rusty Wallace now is on the lead lap. And Bill Elliott blew a tire just as he went across the start finish line. Oh. He hit something and blew a tire on the Coors Ford. Oh, it, he didn't spin or anything like that, but just as he went across the start finish line, there was some metal there, and he ran over it and blew a tire. It sounded like a cannon went off. I mean, that thing really exploded. And so Elliott is slow on the racetrack, but he'll be able to get back into the pit area and probably not lose a lap because of this. But, boy, that could have been a very disastrous situation for Bill. Boy, it just certainly could have been, he had to, his heart had to be up in his throat about that time. Let's see what happens here. Elliott obviously is going to come in for a pit stop to change that tire. There it is, the right rear. Here it is once again, Ned. Okay, as they race down the start finish line, Rusty Wallace crosses, and Bill Elliott crosses, just gets across the start finish line and runs across something, and wham, that tire blows out on him. He gets it down to the inside of the racetrack, and let's go to Jerry Punch in his pit. Well, they had to forcibly pick up the right side of the car and the right rear tire is just absolutely shredded. They roll it away and they have already changed the right side tire. They're trying to pull that right rear fender away because along with cutting the tire down, it has bit the fender in somewhat. Dale Earnhardt is also in. Elliott down, four tire change. And Earnhardt's car now on the jack. Bill Elliott will beat Earnhardt out. And then, of course, the rest of the field moving back to turn one. Well, we wonder about that move. Tires doing heavy body repairs to that right rear quarter panel where the, the fender had been pushed in. Maybe he'll come back in this time for left sides and more body work. Well, it looks like it might have just blown that fender away. There you can see the debris that he apparently ran over and caused that tire to blow. So real developments here. It certainly isn't over until it's over. We'll take a look at it once again. Uh, Rusty wins the race to the stripe, and just after he crossed the line, Elliott runs over the metal. There you can see the metal that he actually ran over, and the tire go, and that uh, spells some problems for uh, Elliott. Let's go to Jerry Punch. Well, this is Bill Elliott's right rear tire. Take a look at the damage here. I mean, a tremendous amount of damage, but the Goodyear inner liner, this inner inside tire is still, is still pumped up, and that's what allowed Bill Elliott to come back around with minimal damage on the car. A shredded right rear tire, but Elliott's fortunate enough to have the inner liner. He made it back to pit road. Let's go to Dick Berger. Dick? Jerry, watch Dale Earnhardt run faster right now. He has just changed the right front, right rear tires. Look at the right front. It had a blister on it. In fact, there were several of them. He ought to go a lot better now once the green flag comes out. All right. Well, we have seen tire problems occur within about 30 laps, and we have got... 34 laps to go in this race. We are under caution and we'll be right back to Dover. Racetrack, and there is the number five car. We're not sure who's leading this race at the moment. Uh, the scoreboard is showing Jeff Bodine as the leader and Bill Elliott second, and that's what you think, Ned. Well, that's what I thought, Bob, because uh, now that Jeff is full of the inside, I thought that he had stayed in the lead lap. We had documented the fact that he had slowed down when he lost the cylinder, but I thought he still... He was just about to be lapped by Bill Elliott before this caution came out, but apparently he had been lapped one time before because he has pulled down to the inside of the racetrack, and Jeff Bodine would not have pulled down to the inside had he not been a lap down. Let's go to the pits quickly for Jerry Punch. Well, we are told that Jeff Bodine is indeed the leader, but the, the chorus crew has already come up and talked to Waddell Wilson and said, hey, you guys are on seven cylinders, so when the green comes out, please pull down and let us come by. And they said, no, no doubt about it. We'll be down out of the way when the green comes out, and Bill Elliott will take the green, and we'll head back for it. Sportsman-like gesture on the part of the Jeff Bodine team, as he does indeed have a tough time getting up to speed. As now we watch up front and uh, the battle for the lead. Now, Bill Elliott is the leader with uh, Dale Earnhardt.
Clark running in second. Then comes by Davey Allison. Fourth place belongs to Kyle Petty. And in fifth is Rusty Wallace. And here they all come off the fourth corner. I don't think you can count Rusty Wallace out of this race, huh, guys? Oh, no. No, not at all. The way he has fought his way back, he's made up four laps so far here today. And look at Kyle Petty move on the inside of Davey Allison taking over the third position. Yeah, but Rusty Wallace is the one on the move. Look at him go under Davey. He's already passed about four cars in the first lap since the restart. Yep. Back in the lead lap after all of this <laughs> uphill climb all day, he's back in the lead lap in contention. Bill Elliott just turned that last lap at 25 and 3 tenths seconds, which is pretty quick uh, after 471 miles. Now that's about the same uh, time that he registered, uh, what, about 100 laps ago when we, uh, we timed it. But so Rusty Wallace now is in the fourth position, and uh, Davy Allison is back to fifth. What do you think about uh, Rusty's chances, Benny? Pretty impressive, isn't he? He has been very impressive, Bob. The only negative that I got to say about it in making the four laps up, he was able to pull down an inside lane and pull up alongside the leader, and it made it a little bit easier to pass. Right now, Rusty Wallace has got to pass a lot of cars including Earnhardt and Elliott he, he's not going to pass them on the caution flag he has literally got to drive by them that's going to be tough yeah it certainly is but uh, as you can see he's closing in now on uh, Kyle Petty I think maybe Mike Alexander ran into a problem over there in the second corner that car dropped low on the racetrack maybe not maybe it was Bobby Hill and Jr. Well, Bobby Hill and Jr. has had a lot of problems today. He's been in and out with this. He's stayed out there, but uh, he has had a lot of problems. Now Bill Elliott has picked the pace up. He turned the last lap in 25 and 8 tenths seconds and pulling away 25-85 this last time around. Gary, that's moving around here this late in the race. Late in the race. I think, you know, the thing about Elliott is he had a flat right rear tire just when he took the caution drive, but they only changed two tires. It's still uh, Dale Earnhardt behind him, and he really falling back has four new tires. So we're seeing a lot of muscle from Bill Elliott with two fresh tires and two hotter tires on the left side. Well, apparently he has the left side of set of tires on there that he wants. You made the comment when uh, they pitted it about 85 laps to go that you would put on your best set of tires now, assuming that the race would go the, the balance of the way. Well, probably Bill Elliott's crew did put on their best set of tires, and that they put the left side on there. And uh, then the right side, of course, uh, had to be changed when he blew out the yeah, I think you're right about that, Ned. Uh, Elliot Crew has, has to have an awful lot of confidence in the left side tires. There's, what, 24 laps to go, but he's pulling away from Dale Earnhardt. Uh, Kyle Petty is almost gaining a little bit on Dale Earnhardt, and he's bringing Rusty Wallace along with him. Well, Gary, let's correct ourselves. We have to report to Gary Cruz that Bill Elliott did put on four tires when he made that uh, tire change. They worked a, a little while there on the right rear, pulling that fender away, but they did go and change the left side tire, too. So, so all of what we were saying went out the window. Yeah. Four new tires. They come down the straightaway. There's first, there's second, Dale Earnhardt. There's the interval between the two. Then back to Kyle Petty, Rusty Wallace, and Davey Allison. Those five very much in the race. Again, we'll show you the separation between first and second. Elliott pulling away just a little bit from Dale Earnhardt as, uh, as both Kyle Petty and Rusty Wallace begin to close in on Dale. You know, the, the funny thing, or not really funny, but the thing that really amazes me about that flat tire that Bill Elliott had was nobody saw the debris on the track. It, it just got there, and once he ran over it, it was obviously a big piece of metal. Maybe that had something to do with uh, Terry Labonte's problem going into turn one. Maybe that came loose from his car and just started running down the racetrack, and, and Elliott didn't have a chance to see it or to make a correction. Let's go to Jerry Punch one more time. We mentioned that Bill Elliott came in and did make a four-tire change. The concern in the Elliott pit is this. Early in the race, Bill Elliott was running thicker tires, brand new tires. That's when he had his only tire problem of the day, when a right rear tire blistered. And they had been running scuff tires for most of the afternoon. When they made this final pit stop, they had to go back and put on four brand new thicker tires. They are concerned because they remember 35 left in the race early on, they blistered a thicker tire. That Earnhardt put on soft tires. Earnhardt should be okay, but they are quite a bit concerned here in the Coors Pit. Okay. Well, of course, they had 35 laps to go when the green flag came back out. Actually, a little less than that. Uh, there was 36 laps to go when the caution came out. So, 
Uh, maybe he can stretch it that far. Now here are both Kyle Petty and Rusty Wallace catching Dale Earnhardt. This is second, third, and fourth right here. Earnhardt definitely losing ground to both Petty and Rusty Wallace. And we may have a battle shaping up here momentarily for that second position. Benny, these guys have got to be wore out after uh, almost 500 laps. Uh, was it really straining on you out there? It was, Bob, because the tires are sticking so well. The cars are adhering to the racetrack so well that your neck and your back is taking uh, a tremendous amount of punishment. We were talking about Jerry Punch made the report that Bill Elliott changed four tires, and he's concerned. I think, man, I, you can see from up on top better than I, but he's driving like he's concerned. He's sported out to a lead, and he's not trying to pull away right now. As a matter of fact, I think Earnhardt, he's letting Earnhardt gain on him right now. Yeah, I think you're right, Benny. He, he pulled out there, got himself a good lead, and now he has slowed down about to four-tenths of a second over what he was running when he was pulling away, and just so are sitting there riding, and I'm sure that he's watching his rearview mirror and also his crew is keeping up with what's going on, telling him what's going on back there as far as the speed that those cars are running. We'll get the interval this time by as Earnhardt comes along. He's a second and a half behind Bill Elliott. And he is actually gaining because he was a little over two seconds ahead uh, just a few moments ago. But I believe it is because that Elliott has slowed down, not that Earnhardt has picked up. Well, if you were thinking about going to the refrigerator for a cold drink, please delay that movement because you may miss the pass for the lead here. Elliott definitely losing ground here. Dale Earnhardt is closing in. Let's see if that's enough. about the same. Maybe just a tick of the watch uh, more of an interval. But nevertheless, Dale Earnhardt, Kyle Petty, and Rusty Wallace are definitely making a race out of it with Bill Elliott, who has pretty much dominated this race from the drop. But Bill Elliott is the leader. Dale Earnhardt is running second. Kyle Petty is third. Rusty Wallace fourth. And Davey Allison is in fifth position. Coming up right after our live telecast of this race, the Maryland Million, the day's the richest day on the racing calendar with a million dollars in purses and awards. That will be right after our uh, coverage of this in the, this uh, Winston Cup race. Ten laps to go next time. And this has pretty much settled down now into uh, a single file formation here as nobody is willing at the moment or perhaps unable to make a pass. There's Rusty Wallace moving to the high side of Kyle Petty in turn number four. Rusty will indeed go into third place. So maybe Rusty says, well, I'm going to let it all hang out here and try to move up as quickly as possible. Now the first three on the racetrack are the first three in Winston Cup points. Boy, that is amazing, now, especially Rusty Wallace. Look at what he's come through today. Now he's moved himself right into third place. You're, you're right, Bob. The three, three point leaders are running from one, two, and three on the racetrack. Evidently, Kyle Petty has found a, yeah. felt a little bit of a vibration. Or something he's uh, slowed a little bit from what he was running. He was challenging Earnhardt there not too many laps to go for second place, and now he's really dropping back, so apparently he feels the tire sort of going away on him. Navy Allison moves to fourth, and Kyle goes back to fifth. There's the leader, and there is the second group led by Dale Earnhardt, but the laps are clicking off. Kyle Petty is making a pit stop, we understand. A tough break for Kyle, who ran so strong all day for the Wood Brothers, but just here in the last five laps, things go wrong with that Sitco Ford, and he comes in for a pit stop that is uh, really going to spell disaster for him. Well, they're going to the right side to change tires on the Sitco Ford, and so he must have had a tire that he felt was going down or either blistering or something. In fact, there was a good bit of heat on the right front of the tire as they took it off. Seven laps to go. There is Earnhardt and Rusty Wallace and Davey Allison, and there is Bill Elliott on the back stretch. Well, Elliott, just after when he took the lead or after he was moving away from Dale Earnhardt, he was turning about 24 and 8 tenths seconds. He slowed down to about 26 and 2 tenths seconds now after he got out there in front. Slowed down to about 4 tenths of a second, conserving those tires. If Bill Elliott wins, it'll be his sixth victory of the year. It will be his 29th career victory in Winston Cup competition. Boy, this is really a Bill Elliott track. I gotta, I gotta think that. You know, it's a four track, it's a Bill Elliott style race track. Uh, he's, he's been thinking all day. Pretty much stayed out of trouble that one track. Uh, 
all the other problems happening all around him, but he's kept his uh, car out of trouble. He really looks like he's just kind of cruising right now with five laps to go. I tell you, we got to give another call to Jeff Bodine, who is still in the lead lap. He's in fifth place now. At the here for about the last 75 or 80 miles. He has kept that car in the lead lap, and he's going to get a good finish out of it today. Four more laps to go. One for their 496 have been completed. Bill Elliott threatens to lengthen his lead in Winston Cup competition. Second place, Earnhardt is second, and Rusty Wallace, third place in Winston Cup, is running third right now. Elliott once again off the fourth corner to complete lap 497. Three to go. If it winds up this way, the way they're running, Bob, uh, Bill Elliott would win, would earn 10 more points than Dale Earnhardt. Uh, second place is 170 points. First place is 175, but Bill has led the most laps, so that would give him five-point bonus. Well, so same bonus for leading that Elliott did. But going into this race, Elliott had a 117-point lead, so he may be moving it up to 127. Here they are, side-by-side side for third position as Davey Allison is now making a challenge on Rusty Wallace. And Rusty certainly doesn't want to lose that third position because it means valuable Winston Cup points. Davey just a little bit poorly on the bottom side of the racetrack and has to give up that position once again to Rusty, but Davey is certainly showing some strength here in the closing stages. This time around, it'll be the white flag for Bill Elliott. Harold Kinder displays it. There it is, the white flag. One more lap to go for Bill Elliott, and he'll have his sixth win of the 1988 season. He moves through corner number two and goes down the back stretch now for the final time. He won here in the spring at Dover and is threatening to make it a clean sweep for 1988. Bill Elliott through corner number three, now corner number four. He's on to the main straightaway. And Bill Elliott from Dawsonville, Georgia, wins the Delaware 500. Second goes to Earnhardt. Third was Rusty Wallace and fourth, Davey Allison. And Jeff Bodine will come home in fifth place in the lead lap. Boy, what a race. Bill Elliott kept his cool all day long. Dale Earnhardt. Really a lot of determination from his part because of all the adversity he faced trying to regain those lost laps. Amazing race today. And now Fords have won the last five races in a row here at Dover Downs International Speedway. Well, it's been a long afternoon of racing, and certainly Bill Elliott is going to be a very tired race driver when he comes to victory lane, but we'll be there to talk with him in just a moment. Elliott wins. What a day, Bill says to me as he takes the helmet off. Outstanding day, Bill. Congratulations on a great run. Could you get much luckier than when the caution come out and the right rear blows out? I couldn't. Man, that's something else right there. <laughs> Your heart had to skip a beat. I mean, did you, did you feel a vibration in the car at all? No, the, the car ran good all day long. We didn't have that much tire problems, and, you know, that really surprised me. I didn't know what the problem was, but just as I crossed the, the, the start-finish line there, when the caution was out, the right rear just blew out. And, boy, that was luck, because, you know, that would put us totally out of the race if that happened during the race. When you took the green on the final restart, you pulled away to about 15, 18 car lengths. Then you began to sit there for a while, and Earnhardt was catching you. Were you just biding your time, or was he actually running you down? Well, I was letting him use his stuff up, and I was just biding my time because I knew I had a good lead, and there wasn't no need abusing it. You know, the car got just a little bit loose there then, but still the car ran good all day long. I had, you know, other than that problem there with the right rear cut down, you know, the, the melling crew did a fantastic job getting in and out of the pits, and, you know, we got to thank Coors and Motorcraft and Ford for their involvement because without them, I wouldn't be right here, that's for certain. Bill Elliott came to this track at 6 o'clock this morning, and he told me, he said, I'm controlling my own destiny. The decision I make this morning will determine what happens to me today and in the championship. He made the right decision. In victory lane, it's Bill Elliott. And our Goodyear Winter Circle interview has been brought to you by Goodyear Eagle Tires. Goodyear, because there really is a difference. Let's take a look at the top ten finishers here this afternoon. The winner was Bill Elliott, finishing in second position with Dale Earnhardt. Rusty Wallace came home third, Davey Allison fourth, and Jeff Bodine finished in fifth position. Finishing in the sixth through tenth positions, Kyle Petty was sixth, Mike Alexander a strong show all day in seventh, Neil Bonnet eighth, Lake Speed ninth, and Ricky Rudd was in tenth position. Now let's take a look at the unofficial point standings. Elliott with 3,548. 
Dale Earnhardt with 3421 and Rusty Wallace at 3409. So still we have a great battle as we head for Martinsville next weekend. And coming up next here on ESPN, the Maryland.